Addressing the allegations. Demon Mama, President Sunday, and Doe. They don't care about the truth. They just make shit up. The more ridiculous the claim, the better. From an anonymous Twitter user in the year of our Lord 2022. It began with an egg. On October 20th, I was reacting to a video featuring the content creators DJ Mule and Kira Chats, aka Bad Bunny. In the video, they described the state of trans rights in the US and the UK as, quote, an ongoing genocide, to which I disagreed. This is ground zero, where it all started. I want to make clear to, to people um, that I want to make sure we can, we can discuss this, just how genocidal Turks are. Because when we uh, say Turks are genocidal, I know we've been using that word a lot to describe what's happening um, in various parts of the world. Yeah. I'm talking right now specifically about the UK and the US, but mm -hmm. it's not exclusive to these two parts of the world, um, of what uh, people are doing to, like trans folks are doing to trans people, uh, including trans children. And I know we've been calling that genocide, and it's true, but yeah, it doesn't change the fact that this is absolutely compatible. True. And I disagree with that. Okay. This sparked an argument between me and my audience. About 40 minutes into me sawing out at my viewers, a streamer named Polly People appeared in my chat to join in the debate. I offered to have a conversation with her, and she accepted. Today, a month and a half later, I am now in a position where enough people have misrepresented this debate and the events that have transpired since that I feel like a response is necessary. This is not intended for the other people involved, as I don't believe they have shown any willingness to honestly engage with my views on this issue. I'm only doing this for my own peace of mind and so my audience has something to refer to in the likely event that this is ever brought up in the future. On top of that, the behavior of some of the people involved in this has been a little bit too interesting for me not to comment on. As for you guys right there, I've seen you all taking to the Twitter front lines to defend my honor. Well, might be a bit easier now, who knows. Because I feel like my views have been so grossly mischaracterized, I'll start by laying out my positions so they are all easily accessible and in one place. My position on trans rights in the US. As I understand it, the last two decades have seen an explosion in trans acceptance and visibility. The number of trans children getting access to affirming care has been rising steadily over the last few years. Trans people are increasingly represented in the entertainment industry as equal human beings, whilst the insensitive tropes of the mid-2000s and before have aged out of fashion. Meanwhile, polling numbers in Europe and North America show a consistently increasing level of support for trans rights. Unfortunately, this progress has also been part of a double-edged sword. The progression of trans rights has recently been coupled with an unprecedented level of scrutiny and disgust from the right wing. Trans people are now, perhaps more than ever, living under a magnifying glass and being cynically used as a political wedge issue by conservative lawmakers and pundits who seem incapable of winning support by any means other than culture wars and fear-mongering. Where Republicans may otherwise worry about alienating potential voters by attacking migrants and African Americans, they don't have this issue when it comes to trans people. The result has been an onslaught of dehumanization, bunk science, and nearly 400 anti-trans bills filed in the last four years. Though only 39 bills of these have become law, though only 39 of these bills have become law, their impact shouldn't be understated. In Texas, Greg Abbott's insane directive has allowed the state to open child abuse investigations into parents who provide gender-affirming care to their trans children. These investigations have been repeatedly blocked thanks to the works of organizations like PFLAG and the ACLU, but it shouldn't be surprising that several families have already fled the state. The recent groomer panic has become the latest addition in the right's playbook of stochastic terrorism, and the wave of attacks against trans people is no coincidence. I don't think there's any hyperbole in saying that every single hack commentator who thought it was a good idea to spend the last two years smearing trans people as child abusers and predators deserve their share of the blame for events such as the recent shooting in Colorado. Unfortunately, this whole saga has almost nothing to do with any disagreements about the empirical facts of what is happening. If you oppose every single one of these bills and you believe the best thing to do now is support the trans advocacy groups and legal organizations that have been working tirelessly to keep more of these laws from passing, or to mutual aid orgs that have been extremely effective in protecting trans people from laws that have been passed, we agree. Or, if you are from the more voshist wing of the internet, you might also think it's a good idea for LGBTQ people and allies to arm themselves in case things take a turn from the worst. To that, I also agree. I've been to the US a couple of times. It's a strange place with a very pre unpredictable future, and if I lived there, I'd probably want to be armed too. If you are in the States and you're interested in helping, I've linked a few charities, advocacy groups, mutual aid orgs, and legal groups in the description, which will be in the YouTube video.
These were recommended to me by trans people in my community. They all accept donations, and most of them are looking for volunteers, so go wild. I've tried to keep the rest of the story as educational as possible, but for the most part, the rest is internet bullshit. I'm gonna be a little bit semi-scripted here as well, so what's on the screen might not make complete sense on its own, but it's close enough. My position on genocide. To be clear, the one thing I'm contesting here is that there is currently an ongoing genocide in the United States. However unlikely I think it is, I do not disagree that the current situation, in particular the rhetoric and political ambitions of various pundits and legislators, could lead to a genocide in the future, and have said as much in my very first stream on this topic. I think we're at the beginning stages of a potential genocide. Okay, that's a bit more acceptable. That's me reading a chart. Because you can look at the stages of genocide and be like, you know, stage one, two, three, four, five of dehumanization, of otherization, of uh, mistreatment, like uh, legal mistreatment and all that. Yeah, you can see all of that. Problem is, like every ethnic minority in every country in the fucking world is at some stage of genocide. <laughs> okay. The problem is like, that's not what makes it a genocide. Okay. That just means that we have like systemic discrimination and like unequal rights. That's not genocide though. Okay, the same position I hold now. My disagreements are with the following. One, that there is currently an ongoing genocide in, against trans people in the United States. And two, that Republican lawmakers are currently legislating with the specific intent, covert or otherwise, to kill trans people. First, I will try to make as clear as possible my opinion on what is and isn't a genocide. I'll give two of the most well-known definitions and then my own thoughts which rest somewhere in between them. So, what is a genocide? Genocide is, first and foremost, an international crime. International crime being a collective term for the most extreme violations of international law, the others being war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crime of aggression. Of these four core crimes, genocide is widely understood to be the gravest. The term was first coined in 1944 by the Polish lawyer Raphael Lemkin, primarily in response to the Holocaust but also to other instances in history such as the Armenian Genocide under the Ottoman Empire. After outlining his thoughts in a book called Axis Rule in Occupied Europe, Lemkin led the campaign to have genocide recognized under international law. His definition was then negotiated and narrowed by the United Nations and was finally codified as an independent crime in 1948. The UN Definition of Genocide. I'll just read this and then we'll talk about it. So, Article 2. In the, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E. Forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So, when people say the UN definition of genocide, they don't just mean the words in here. That's not really how you would approach any law or even just any concept. The, the words here are like half of the definition or less than half. The much bigger half is precedent. The way that each of these terms are understood, the way that the law is practiced and uh, used either by historians or by lawyers or for example, that word destroy there, destroy specifically means physical or biological. So killing people or forcibly sterilizing them. That's like the main thing there. Um, intent, intent means, uh, I think the Latin term they use is dolus specialis, which means special intent, which means it has to be like um, premeditated, calculated, uh, planned in advance, like that kind of thing as well. And it has to be shown that the people were intending to physically or biologically destroy. So, and killing here means like directly killing, as in the state or an army directly killing. Uh, serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. If you look at the precedent for that, that is basically always um, in reference to rape or torture. Like, you know, again, like inflicting torture, not like indirect or whatever. So, um, conditions of life calculated to bring about its destruction in whole and part. This will be more to do with something like, um, uh, something like depriving them of food and water. That's usually what that refers to. Sometimes I think it refers to like very essential medicines. Like if uh, I think this was brought up when Russia was blocking uh, medicine and 
uh, was it Red Cross from going into Mariupol? So yeah. Um, so yeah, these all have like much more specific meanings than just randomly interpreting it. Um, of course, there are a few contentions. One very big one, gender and uh, gender identity or sexuality isn't there. It should be. I think everyone would probably say that they should be. I think another one would be uh, the way that it evolved over time. So if, for example, you might say this special intent thing is a little bit too specific. Uh, first of all, intent, you can prove with circumstantial evidence. So you couldn't do the whole Holocaust denial, Hitler didn't order the Holocaust on paper. Like You can't really do that because there's a metric ton of circumstantial evidence surrounding that, like the idea that he knew. So, um, But if you think something like when it comes to intent to destroy, and you think um, something like, what if they were allowing a destructive course to continue with intent to destroy? Um, if you believe that, um, well, the UN wouldn't agree with you, but historians would. Historians are a lot less generous to the perpetrators when it comes to intent. So where international law might not say like um, events like the Holodomor or the Irish famine or the Great Indian Famine were genocidal because they weren't intentionally caused, a historian might say that there's enough evidence surrounding those three events that the uh, legislators and people in power at the time used those events and allowed them to carry on deliberately as a way of uh, getting rid of the undesirables. So that's where the intent bit is a bit more loose in history. Um, destroy, this is the, probably the biggest bit, um, the original definition proposed by Raphael Lemkin Destroy included cultural genocide. So that's probably the main thing there, intent to destroy. Um, because according to Lemkin, you can have a genocide without anyone dying. No, without anyone being killed by the state, technically. Um, he outlines that quite a bit. I'll maybe elaborate on that in a moment. But today, I think in international law, they call that ethnocide. But yeah, cultural genocide is kind of a thing as well. And I think going in common parlance, because I'm not like a lawyer, I think if like a Ukrainian or like an indigenous person told me like they were like that there was a genocide at the hands of colonizers or like the Soviet Union and all that, like, yeah, I'm probably not going to split hairs over that. Like cultural genocide is definitely like a valid term, I think. Um, another thing, political groups, that was another one. Political affiliation was a category here from Lemkin, but it got taken out of the UN convention because mostly because Stalin didn't want it there. So there's been a few shifts, and I actually don't disagree with a lot of what Lemkin wanted to put in there in the beginning. So there you go. Though Lemkin's definition is more broad, and I don't disagree with a lot of what he included, the acts he does describe as genocide without killing, which we understand today as cultural genocide, were always in the context of colonialism. They included the residential school systems in the United States and Canada, the destruction of Irish culture under British rule, the Japanese occupation of Korea, etc. In his own words, acts of cultural genocide include language bans, forced exile of individuals, specifically cultural representatives, forced re-education, as well as the banning and destruction of national treasures, libraries, museums, artifacts, and art galleries. There's actually a bit here where cultural genocide was almost put into law. I think it's just down here. He describes the acts um, here. Again, you can probably... You'd have to consider precedent for all this as well. Obviously, the law was never put into place. I don't think cultural genocide to this day is still a crime, which is unfortunate. But historians actually do have a way of interpreting each of these things. So forcible transfer, this is like every cultural genocide that I know of, I think is like residential school systems or forced re-education or the state-run settlements in Australia. Uh, systematic exile, this is a huge part of it. There's lots of, uh, especially with the Soviet Union or with the Nazis in Poland, there was a lot of exile. Um, although they would say that you can technically have this without killing anyone, uh, I think it's been, I can't, I don't know if you could find a cultural genocide that didn't also involve the states killing people. Soviet Union would, as part of cultural genocide, would murder, uh, intellectuals from the states that they invaded. Um, like in Australia, there were loads of like massacres against indigenous people as part of their cultural genocide as well. So, um, I don't think it's necessary, but it seems to be quite common state and military killing. All right. We all good with that. We got a rough idea. If I was going to explain this to a 10 year old, by the way, just like to summarize, I would say um, genocide is the state or a military killing a group of people because they're that group of people physically killing them. And cultural genocide would be uh, killing a culture. 
through measures such as this. Okay. If you were talking about somewhere like China, the reason they're saying that what's happening in China is a genocide, as well as a cultural genocide, would be this one here, the forced sterilizations in Xinjiang, because that is biological destruction. Like they seize you, they put you into a camp or a prison, and they just forcibly sterilize you against your will. Um, but you might ask, if they stopped the sterilizations and everything else carried on, would it still be a genocide? Well, according to the UN Convention, that's a bit harder to prove, but in history or cultural genocide, it definitely is because of all the other things, the re-education, destroying um, mosques, rounding people up, sending Han Chinese people into the houses of Uyghurs against their will, all kinds of shit like that. Yeah. Anyway, a final, more popular source here would be the 10 stages of genocide based on the essay by Dr. Gregory H. Stanton. Again, when you're looking at this one, it's really important to consider precedent. You probably don't want to jump in and just interpret any of these words very loosely. Uh, if you read the original essay, this is a mistake. I think it's a mistake people make a lot all the time, actually. You know, like with uh, 14 points of fascism, if you just read the little headings for each point, you can shoehorn just about like any populist into being a fascist because there's so much like room for interpretation. But when you read the essay itself and the paragraphs and the examples he gives, it's a lot more narrow. It's the same with this. For example, symbolization sounds quite broad, but the examples he gives in the essay are all like really extreme. So the examples he gives, even in the box in the circle here, it's like um, yellow stars for Jews in Germany or uh, blue scarves for people in uh, under the Khmer Rouge or white armbands for Bosnians during the Bosnian War. So it's all quite like extreme. Uh, but the way they've worded this summary, I think, is quite good. So here, uh, Gregory H. Stanton, president of Genocide Watch, developed the 10 stages of genocide, which explains the different stages which lead to a genocide. At each of the earlier stages, there is an opportunity for members of the community or the international community to halt the stages and stop genocide before it happens. That wording is very specific. Um, stop genocide before it happens. So just being on a handful of these stages doesn't immediately mean there's a genocide. He doesn't say exactly like when the genocide starts according to him, but when you look down here, there's a bit of a clue. Preparation, perpetrators plan the genocide. They often use euphemisms such as the Nazis phrase, the final solution to cloak their intentions. So at seven, it's planning. And the example of a genocide being planned, they use as the final solution. So, and then eight, persecution, genocidal massacres begin. So it happens quite late, according to this guy. And he's suggesting that the final solution was the genocide. So that that's what he counts as genocide in Germany. Keep that one in mind for later. Okay, that's going to be, that's going to come back a little bit. And for the rest of it, he doesn't really specify exactly what order it can happen in. They can happen in different orders. Um, for example, Nuremberg laws actually came before the stars. So, you know. Um, but the other thing he stresses as well is that, like, um, everything here, there are lots of things here that you could say apply to just about every discriminated group on Earth. I think the thing that Stanton, I think he mentions it in the essay as well, I might be wrong, is that Every genocide starts with these early stages, but very few groups at these early stages ever end up becoming victims of genocide. So that's like, again, just being a bit more careful with how you understand the terms and where they were coming from, because there's a bit of misuse that goes on around this. An example, actually, I'll give you one here. This is an example, I think, of someone quote unquote doing it wrong, um, because there's an anti-transgenocide building and we're entering step eight. So remember the example Stanton gave of step eight was the final solution. Like Nazi death squads and death camps. So I think that's maybe a slightly broad interpretation. Like I don't think hate crimes count as genocide, but yeah, you know, different kind of crime. Okay, as a side note, I imagine some viewers at this point have already made the objection, wait, law? What are you, a fucking liberal? To which my answer is, first of all, genocide's a crime. Like, under whatever definition you're using, it's a, it was coined and it's used as a crime. But anyway. To much my answer is, I will never appeal to a law unless I think it is, at least to some degree, morally defensible. I have given my issues with the UN definition of genocide, but I nonetheless think it's important that people can at least have some shared understanding of what the term means. 
International laws are far from perfect, but I do believe the world is a better place when nations, for as long as they exist, can have some basic understanding of what is morally acceptable and what is not. The Refugee Convention allows victims of war and persecution to seek protection across borders in a way that wasn't available to the Jews in Nazi Germany. Our shared understanding of border sovereignty has left Russia almost completely isolated in its war on Ukraine. The legal, diplomatic agreements between nations have allowed us to give Ukrainians the means to defend themselves against reckless acts of imperialism and, incidentally, genocide. This is a video giving the case for why the Russian war in Ukraine is genocidal. This is a protection that people in Eastern Europe unfortunately didn't have when they were attacked by the Nazis and the USSR. With that, these are my reasons for not describing the situation in the US as an ongoing genocide. One, descriptively, I don't believe it works. Horrific as they are, I see no use in putting the actions against trans people in the US under the same umbrella as what happened in Bosnia, Rwanda, or the Ottoman Empire. Nor do I think they have much resemblance to the historical acts of, hmm, of cultural genocide, such as Canada or Korea. 2. Because of this, the ways we respond to something like discrimination and the ways we respond to genocide are radically different. Likewise, the ways we avoid a genocide are also different from the ways we stop one which is ongoing. If a state is committing genocide, it's very unlikely that acts of civil resistance are still an option. Bearing in mind, genocide is an international crime. Historically, genocide has justified economic sanctions or even military intervention from the international community. Whether you agree with it or not, one of the justifications given for the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia was that it prevented a repeat of what happened in Bosnia. Genocide. At a domestic level, genocide typically describes a situation where it's perfectly acceptable for people to take up arms against the state. It would be difficult to condemn the Rohingya rebels in Myanmar or the Jewish partisans in Eastern Europe because theirs is slash was a position where the only means of combating the state's actions is to fight. Though I can imagine scenarios where violent resistance against the state or even other civilians would be acceptable, I don't believe the US is quite there yet. 3. I believe that in order for us to engage with each other, a shared understanding of language is fundamentally important. If you've ever been called a communist for supporting socialized healthcare or a neoliberal for supporting the arming of Ukrainians, you should know what I mean. Likewise, if a community online decides in its own in arbitrary interpretation of what constitutes a genocide, then goes on to accuse people who disagree with them as engaging in genocide denial, I believe that is a problem worth talking about. This is a stream from uh, Demon Mama, titled Destroying Genocide Denial with Facts and Logic, which she gives her case for why there's a transgenocide in the US. Okay. In my research on this topic, one of the things I've noticed is that none of the major organizations who are fighting these laws have been using the word genocide. At the moment, it seems like something that hasn't really escaped the confines of Twitter and a few online leftist spaces, but the arguments people have made for invoking it have been varied. Some are just clear misinterpretations, but I've also heard people arguing in favor of calling it a genocide, not so much for descriptive accuracy, but as a means of shocking people into action. The problem is that once a word like genocide is invoked, every other term feels deflating by comparison. In spite of this, I do think it's worth stressing the point here. To use a term other than genocide is not to downplay the situation. Despite not having the same rhetorical flourish, discrimination kills people. It causes trauma, hate crimes, suicides, and murders. People have a human right to flee their homes as refugees to escape persecution, human rights abuses. Only two years ago, millions of people rose up in protest against systemic discrimination towards black people. For all the pain, suffering, and death that was highlighted by the BLM protests, I don't remember anyone ever using the word genocide. That's because genocide is a different crime which requires a different response. As an example, take the situation of European Muslims, a group that has been systematically othered by governments and media for decades. Since 9-11, they have been routinely dehumanized, branded as terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. They are banned from wearing their veils in France, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Bulgaria, and the Netherlands. In the UK, the Prevent Strategy Counterterrorism Program has placed an expectation on untrained citizens to out potential extremists to the state. This policy is so hawkish that it has resulted in children being detained by the state because their teachers mistook the Arabic writing on their clothes for ISIS symbols. Muslim girls face the common bullying routine of having their hijabs ripped off of them in schools. Hardly surprising when their biggest representative in the British media in the last decade 
was Shamima Begum. Boys are blamed for the most recent terror attack and assaulted by their peers for so much as having a Middle Eastern name. On the week of 9-11, this also happened to me. Muslim men have been murdered on their doorsteps by far-right thugs after being falsely accused of grooming. Mosques are the frequent targets of arson attacks and vehicle rammings. All the while, conservative politicians will run entire campaigns on anti-Muslim messaging and describe the Islamic faith as a virus. Almost half of the Conservative Party sees Islam as a threat to the British way of life. They are encouraged to be discreet about their faith when seeking employment, and their overrepresentation in frontline services and deprived areas led to them having a significantly higher death rate during the pandemic. The Christchurch shooting, which took place in New Zealand, led to a 600% increase in hate crimes across the UK. Pundits like Tommy Robinson and Paul Joseph Watson barely waited a day before going back to pushing the same great replacement rhetoric that inspired the shooter a theory which has been the key talking point for the second largest party in France for over 10 years. This is a level of bigotry that suppresses a culture, destroys lives, and all too often gets innocent people killed. Does it, however, belong in the same category as what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar? No. One is discrimination and human rights violations, the other is genocide. Though they both stem from the same hatred, they are descriptively different and they warrant radically different responses. These are my views now, just as they were a couple of months ago before my first debate on the issue. Now, for the internet bullshit. You guys can feel free to ban Ellen Degenerate until after the stream if he's being annoying. Polly people! First of all, I am very aware that having this discussion at all is bound to be an optical loss for me. If I'm taking the position that what's happening is awful, but not as awful as genocide, it will inevitably look like what I'm doing is downplaying. This is especially the case when half of the audience has an interpretation of genocide that is radically different from my own, or from any that I've ever observed in law, history, or common parlance. I accept this. What I absolutely do not accept are the following accusations. One that I was overly cruel to a scared trans person who was only asking for my empathy. Two, that I tried to bait her into breaking TOS so that she would lose her Twitch channel. And three, that I expressed some sussy baka opinions about the Holocaust. Here are my issues with the first claim. In case some of you don't know, Polly People is, at least occasionally, a debate streamer. She has appeared on extremely combative debate panels with Christian conservatives, as well as the likes of Alex Stein and Sean Last. Pregnant. Polly, is it possible for a man to get pregnant? Yes. How? Is it with his penis will have a baby? A baby will come out of his pee hole? Trans dudes can get pregnant. And trans dudes are dudes, my guy. I know you can't, you know, you don't like that, that reality, but it is reality because we are who we Are you your brain or are you your dick? Right? You think, does your dick talk to you? I mean, maybe it does, but I get my Mine idea does. of who I am. And okay, well then, well then that's because you're kind of a freak. But like, I know I am a freak, my brain freak. tells me so. Yeah, I can see that. You know, I can, you know, you got that vibe to you. Uh, but you know I'm a freak. Me, on the, me on the other hand, my brain tells me who I am. And so, uh, do you still have it? Do you still have male? Do you still have a male penis? Ask your mom. So I just wanted to illustrate. Um, I could have probably got like 50 million more clips of this, but like poly people is okay with very combative panels with people who are very, uh, <laughs> let's say, out there. Pretty transphobic. Like, Alec, we all don't know who Alex Stein is. I think this shapeshifter person is like a very famous um, right wing detransitioner. Sean Last is like, he's like the final boss of um, internet uh, race realism and great replacement stuff. So, you know, probably not the most. Uh, Probably not the most friendly to trans people either. Anyway. When she came into my chat, I was already in the middle of a heated exchange with my community. Her input was not to ask for an empathetic discussion, but to argue the specific case that there is an ongoing genocide in the United States. Throughout this debate, she was not ambiguous about what she was there for. She made it clear that what she wanted from the conversation was for me to at least call it a genocide. But I guess if it's a genocide, that action is insufficient then, is it? What, what, what should I do? What, what more should I do? Uh, you should at least be willing to call it 
a genocide. That's a, at least. If I don't call it a genocide, what? I'm insufficient? Well, you're, you, you, are, you, are, you are not accepting uh, uh, the truth of what's going on. Uh, going on, sorry. Um, streamable is really annoying for not moving the clip properly, but okay. She even went so far as to say that my disagreement over the term genocide was an indication that I don't recognize the threat. Well, pay attention to the threat that she's talking about here as well. The problem, but you're saying the problem with me is that I'm not calling it a genocide then. It goes both ways. If the only bar I'm not crossing is calling it a genocide, we're just talking like what? Well, I don't know. I'm just not using to your level of like you, your fair. tone or what? To be fair, I don't know much about your position on trans people, right? Okay. Right. right. I saw your last video, you know, and I had critiques about it, but, 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 uh, um, you know, I, I, I didn't come away with the feeling like you didn't recognize the threat that exists to trans people until, until, well, I guess this very moment. And now it, you know, like your, your sort of over reliance on, um, I'm not so sure, like the need for people to start dying before you're willing to call something a gen or visibly dying in a way that you would recognize as opposed to just dying invisibly that's going on right now, a way that's going on right now. I can tell you very, I can tell you very clearly there's a though. Genocide going on or an intended genocide. Yeah, I was thinking about the wrong clip, but yeah, like it's like evidence that I don't recognize the threat. After I had made my positions on anti-trans legislation clear, she once again said I should at least call out what was happening, and followed up to say that the core transphobe wanted to eliminate trans people just like the Nazis did. So you're kind of getting the impression here is that the debate is about her trying to convince me to use certain language and use the same descriptions that she is, okay? so uh, Real trans people don't talk about these ways in the ways that, like, you know, uh, Vosh, for example, does, or the people that talk about, you know, self-defense with fucking arms. That's crazy. Like, that is not going to help us. Uh, it, the thing that will help us is if you at least call out what is happening, right? Instead of, like, uh, you, you know, you know, saying, well, it's not quite as bad as you think. Like, just because there's some libs that, like, maybe fall prey to the idea that, uh, um, you know, there's there's like an overtreatment of gender dysphoria, right? Mm. Uh, doesn't mean that the core transphobe wants to uh, do nothing short of eliminate trans people. However, that happens, just like the fucking Nazis did. They didn't necessarily need to cart every person off. Uh, they were happy with emigration, they, which will happen. Uh, people will at least move states, right? Because only certain states right now are genocidal. Uh, some states are not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, forcing people to move out, force uh, making people's lives miserable such that they kill themselves. Uh, that's that's all in the playbook. The 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 core intent of these these uh, laws is to kill or eliminate by by whatever means necessary trans people. There's uh, if you don't notice that there, that's a. Uh... They said this in chat as well. That's like a that's a Jewish trans person getting very irritated by the Holocaust comparisons. But yeah, that, if that's what we mean by at least call out what's happening, and that what's happening is that the core transphobe is just like the Nazis, and that um, the core intent of the policies is to kill. Tra like yeah, I mean, if I don't yeah, um, like just for we'll get to it later. But like the Nazis in the nineteen twenties, openly very loudly said that they wanted to remove every Jew from Europe. Like Hitler in Mein Kampf said that if like at least if like 10 or 15,000 Jews died in the first world war, um, it would have been worth it. It would have been worth the loss. Like, so uh, it's a little, uh, yeah, no, oh, sorry. When she asserted that Republican legislators were trying to get trans people killed, I asked her if she had any examples. She seemed outraged that I asked the question at all. You're not going to be uh, frozen in fear if you really kind of like use the, the, you know, in my judgment would be the most correct words to describe what's going on in a way that people will hear and be like, oh, maybe I should look into this. Because, because uh, I'm not wrong in the way I describe it. I think that that, uh, that, that, that proves out when, you, when I, you know, it's not, we're, we're not just arguing about a word. 
it seems. It seems like we're arguing about what these anti-trans laws are really about and what they are intended to do. It seems like you're unwilling to accept that uh, uh, the laws are being passed because they don't, they are dehumanizing us and demonizing us in a way that you, <laughs> that is necessary and sufficient to create genocidal intent in a population. So you're saying it's not over a word, but it is though. We agree on what people should do to stop it. We agree on how bad it is. We agree on where it's happening. Yeah, like it is just the word. You don't think they're trying to kill trans people? You, no, I don't think you they're- told me Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Can you, okay, can you tell me which legislator is trying to kill trans people? Are there any specific ones? Any out, any like wait definite? Wait a second, are you telling me that the only way I can prove to you that there's a genocide is that if I find a, find a legislator, hook them up to a lie detector and the legislature says, oh, I don't want to kill trans people and it beeps red. And then you'd be like, oh, because you found one, one legislator and you proved beyond a reasonable doubt that person is, has genocidal intent. Will you then agree it's a genocide? No, you wouldn't even do it then. You'd be like, well, that's just, so I don't know, I feel like it's probably fair to ask that question. I wasn't asking for it again. Even when I tried to give her leeway here, citing Hitler as an example of how intent can be inferred, she moved off the point and asked me about my views on the Holocaust instead. So after I've asked her which Republicans are trying to get trans people killed, she's kind of outraged that I asked the question, I gave her leeway and show how you can infer intent. Then she just tries to move. I know on, you so. wouldn't even do it. Then you'd be like, "Well, that's just one." Well, I can say with, um, for example, there's. I, I don't know, there's there's like, no way wait, to no, prove no, no, no. Oh, wait, wait, I can give you a lot of leeway here. Um, there's the because there's like these kind of discussions that they'll ask, like when it comes to uh, studying, like in law, like genocide. They'll say, um, "Can we see genocidal intent in Hitler before 1941?" And some people will say yes because he's talking about removal by any means, even though there's no sign that he wants to kill people. It's like, well, if you want to remove millions and millions of people. How else are you going to do that apart well, from killing them? So that's so I'm bringing up because she brought up like the, she was the first person to bring up Nazis in this as well. I'll have the links uh, after in the video description. Um, yeah, she brings up Nazis like quite a lot. So I just thought I'll just give her that example to show like you can show intent without it being explicit. So I'm just trying to give her leeway here to the original question. But I think instead she tries to move on to like this different. It's just really weird. That's why they would no say. There, but that's how, no. That's how like, you would say. Like, like that's how you would matter. say. That's how you would say that there was warnings of genocide. There was plenty of it. I say that I would say there was. I would say you couldn't say. What? Well, of course. What did I just say? Wait, wait. What did I just say? Okay, so uh, what I think you said is that Hitler had genocidal intent before. When, when would you say the ge uh, when would you say the genocide of the Jews actually happened or or started? No, no, wait. That's not the the question. Is whether or not the intent when the intent showed, right? So I'm trying to keep her on topic here, but and well, now I'm interested in your answer to my question. Well, the signs of the intent were there from like 1919 when Hitler wrote that thing about removal. Yeah, the, yeah. But when war. would you say? When would you say, according to you? We'll come back to the Holocaust stuff a bit later, but um, I think the impression here is just that like people were saying I was being really cruel to this person, or I was being really bombastic or debate bro. Like I don't know, I felt like I was letting her go off quite a, a bit, and I was letting her kind of take me into all these different directions in the debate and like steering off topic and stuff like that. Like I don't know. Um, I think there were maybe a couple of points where I got slightly irritated, but for the most part, like I feel like the debate tactics are more coming from her end as well. But um, more than mine. But anyway, um, all right. Near the end of the debate, she seemed to be arguing that any form of systemic discrimination which gets people killed should count as a genocide. So, if you were on the ground in this clip's quite long, so I'm going to use it a few times. But we'll just move to here. Wasn't done in the way that you would specifically call a genocide. Yes, that's why that's why we have a definition of genocide. Yeah, if they're die if people die oh, because of if people die Jesus because Christ. of systemic discrimination, that's not genocide. No. It, how is that not genocide? If people die as a result of systemic discrimination. Okay, can we okay, wait, wait, can we just okay, can you just admit to me right? Can you just wait, I've got I leave the clips quite big just for context, but yeah, that's at that point I'm just um I don't know. I think you could probably argue that all systemic discrimination against minorities gets them killed in one way or another, but we'll get to that. It seemed apparent that what Polly wanted was for me to accept her claims without providing any explanation for them. 
By asking her a couple of questions that she didn't have an answer to, I was doing it wrong. This is because Polly is not someone who is just afraid and looking for empathy from other streamers. She is someone who believes that people on the left should agree with her positions on trans issues uncritically. She is very open about this on her streams where she explicitly said, whilst reflecting on our debate, that you don't have to understand, you can just believe what we're telling you. We don't need empathy. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't, <laughs> we need people to fight for us and believe us. Like, you don't have to understand us. You, you don't have to, like, like the require, the fucking requirement that somehow we have to make you understand. That's, that's not, that's not good. Like, that's bad thinking. You know, if you're pro-trans people and, uh, you know, you have somebody like me, uh, you know, explain to you why there's a trans genocide, you have, a, you get an un, unexpected backlash from your take. The correct thing is to just assume you don't, you know, if you don't understand, uh, uh, it's, you know, that's not on us. That's on you. And you don't have to understand. You could just, you could just believe what we're telling you. She streamed about me for about five or six days after this debate. There was quite a lot to go through, but I don't want to drown in sources, right? You might think I'm being hyperbolic when I describe her as a puritanical ideologue, but she wouldn't. Right. But they don't like me for some reason. I'm sort of the odd one out on the target list. Right. Because I'm I am. I'm like, by all respects, like a like a like a like a pure puritanical, like, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, ideologue. Right. You would say you would say that certainly. Right. So, like, you know, to have an attack on me from the left, it's got to be personal as opposed to ideological. Right. Thanks, Stardust's response to that. To that is quite funny. Right. So, like. You know, to have an attack on me, right, you would say. You would say that, certainly. Right, so like, you know, to have an attack on me from the left. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, if, you're a, if you want to be like a puritanical ideologue, I think that's fine. That's, that's cool, you know? I like having, it's good to have variety in the Twitch space. We're, we're like, a, you know, that's where we, this is where you get like the more weird political commentary. That's cool. The problem is, is that, being like that, but then people trying to frame you as something completely different to that is just weird. But you'll notice that um, a lot of these complaints that were made about my debate with Polly didn't actually come from Polly. We'll get to that, though. She believes that any pushback on her claims about genocide is a form of tone policing. That's another one. The, one of the things people are saying uh, is that people like me who say there's a trans genocide out there uh, should not do that. Um, because it's not just about whether or not there's a genocide. They'll say, like, this is about a word, right? Are you using the word properly? And, you know, where I come from, we have a, we have a, we have a saying for that. It's, it's tone police. <laughs> so, like, the debate seems to be is should we tone police trans people? And people aren't picking up that I'm trying to, like, say, look, you shouldn't have panels on this because it's essentially a question of should we tone police trans people? So we don't believe, yeah. So we shouldn't have panels on this, although she's happy to have debates about it. Um, so I think I, in the debate, there's a spot where I even asked if the whole point of it was just for rhetorical flourish. Um, she said no, though. She said it was descriptively true. I don't really know how that would count as tone pleasing. I'm pretty sure tone pleasing is when you like have a go at like a black woman for being aggressive or like a or uppity or something like that. Like it's more, yeah, it's about tone, not about a disagreement on an issue, but yeah. Of course, arguing that someone is using a term incorrectly is not anywhere near the same as tone policing, especially when you are the one implying that others shouldn't be publicly voicing those disagreements. In her own words, real allies don't quibble with the definition. This is a tweet. Real allies don't quibble with the definition. All right. Um, if this is the case, I am led to wonder, why would she come on my stream to debate the topic of genocide if the only correct response I can give is to agree without challenging her? Of course, Polly is not the representative of all trans people, nor is the group of trans people she surrounds herself with online. This makes it especially inconvenient for her when she faces disagreement from other trans people. When Vivian Wolf challenged the idea that I pulled out of a conversation with President Sunday because I was afraid, Polly almost sparked an argument with this over, Viv, over this with Viv before Viv had even watched the debate. Well done, Dollarbox reading. 
Um, pretty sure it's not because he was afraid. Uh, Lornerbox is not as well versed on genocide as he tries to appear. He may have felt unprepared. Um, it's not my experience. He's a non dishonest person. Uh, I haven't seen the discussion. So she says she hasn't seen the discussion. Polly says, yo, are you saying I'm wrong here? I'm not. I mean, I think Viv went on a stream later and, t and spoke about how um, she almost got like into a fight with Polly over this like thing here. But even though I think Viv actually came out against me after this anyway. So, yeah, just... One more example. Lexibat is another trans streamer who argues against using the word, but only for tactical reasons. As he was trying to explain his position whilst reviewing our debate, Polly was typing in Lexibat's chat saying, call it what it is, and Jesus Christ, just say genocide. This clip's a little bit long, but... Murder or suicide, mass suicide, caused by policy. That's what a democide is. I would use that instead, personally. There are other definitions, Polly, yes. So you can see oh, the chat here is really difficult to see, but in the side here... Oh, I can just do this, sorry. In the side here, she's saying, um, this is when she came in, call it what it is, uh, Jesus Christ, just say genocide, just as Lexi Bat's explaining his position. Like. Yes. But the problem is, most people don't know the other definitions. Your average Joe on the street doesn't know the other definitions. Like at all. Like, I am also trans, Polly. I am also terrified by all of this, right? I am also at risk. But at the end of the day, it's a tactics debate. That's what we're having, right? We're having a tactics argument. Do we use an emotive word that causes people who don't know any better to book, or do we use a term that is at least technically more accurate, even if it is, by all intents and purposes, as I said, a genocide, right? Do we make people book, or do we say, this is a thing, this is what it means, this is why this is that, and is leading to genocide? That is the biggest pile of horse shit I've ever heard in my life, 255. My daughter was using non-binary pronouns for me when she was four. Also, they, them is not a neo pronoun. Fuck off. Yeah, like, the, at the end of the day, this is like a, a tactics conversation more than it is a terminology one. Because you're right, it is. But legally, like, on the world court... I think this is what Polly said to set Alex off. Okay, this is nuts, I don't get your take Because it's here, broken, yeah. and the definition is nonsense. It doesn't work. And if anyone is going to fucking refer to it as a genocide, if anyone does know the definition of genocide, it'll be the UN definition they know. That's because you're not cunting listening, Polly, for fuck's sake. You're hearing the shit you want to hear or the shit you think I'm saying, and you're not listening to what I'm actually cunting saying. Try open your fucking ears. Jesus, my seven-year-old can listen better than this. My take is, yeah, amongst us, it's a fucking genocide. But when you are talking to people who don't fucking know any better you cannot use the word genocide because they have been taught to be fucking balking at us they have been taught to not pay attention and to tune that shit out they have been taught that that word means something very different than what it actually fucking means because the legal definition by the un is bollocks and useless yeah alexi about some help right now, yeah Lonerbox here is arguing from a stance of exclusively the UN definition. You are using prescriptive language. He was using descriptive language. It's not fucking hard to understand. No, because you don't get to come into my chat and fucking talk to me like that. You just don't get to. You can ask questions and you can listen and you can actually pay attention to what I'm fucking saying. You cannot come in here and put fucking words in my mouth. And just purposefully hang on to your damn ignorance because you're too damn prideful to let it go and listen to somebody else. If you want to be that prideful, that's up to you. It's not my cunting problem. But at the end of the day, you are not the only trans person in existence and you are not the only person scared and you are not the only person at risk. And you are not the only person who has ideas of tactics and how to deal with things. 
This is why the fucking left eats itself. Because people like you are incapable of listening to other cunting people. Murder. I like that guy. He's cool. All right. Ooh. The second claim. TOS baiting. Brackets. Fed posting. During this debate, I allegedly tried to manipulate Polly into saying something that would break the Twitch terms of service. This allegation would suggest that my intention during this debate was to get this person, who I'd never met before, to lose her channel. I find this accusation especially strange because it certainly doesn't speak to any pattern of behavior on my part. My views on deplatforming are generally more permissive than those of most leftists I associate with, and I don't typically celebrate when other people get banned. If I was trying to get Polly banned, it would be very out of character for me, and I would imagine the burden of proof for such an allegation would be fairly high. Here are the two instances that are referred to. I'll just read all of this and then we'll watch it. In the first, I asked the question, if you think it's a genocide, why aren't you trying to get legislators killed? The purpose of me asking this question was to illustrate the difference between discrimination and genocide. We justify the acts of the Jewish partisans and Rohingya rebels because the regimes they were and are fighting are genocidal. They're in a position where besides fleeing, that is their only recourse. It's a descriptively different problem with different prescriptive solutions. So legislators do this because they want to kill the trans people. Then the way you respond to that is, well, what would you do? What would you do if the Nazis took power? You wouldn't oppose like Jewish militias trying to assassinate Nazi politicians, right? So I don't know, like if you're calling it a genocide, then why are you not trying to get legislators killed in self-defense? Uh -huh. Well, I'm not, you know, I would never talk about that. Uh, so when someone answers that question with, I would never talk about that, it kind of sounds like, again, I could have been wrong. Um, it kind of sounds like they're saying, yes, that's just my first reading of it. And my response to it was just to, and again, just engage with it, because obviously I think that's a really stupid thing to advocate for. Like she could just reject the premise if she doesn't like it, but we'll see. You, you wouldn't know, talk about that, it, but yeah. you, okay. Well, 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 I wouldn't do any. I would personally not do anything like that. Like yeah, that. Just, if I was feeling mean here, if I was talking to like a right winger, I would probably keep asking the question, but I'm just accepting her answer and just assuming it means what I think it means and then going off with it. So you can say other people to like, fuck up their own lives and go to jail and just like ruin everything just because and actually probably fuck the movement even more. But that's the logical conclusion, right? If someone is has genocidal intent and is trying to action it gradually, they are fair uh, game, right? So I think you are, you are, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're now, you're being unfair. Uh, you're, you're painting me as somebody who is now trying, God, you're doing the thing. You're saying now I'm the murderer trying to get, because I am calling something what it is. You're now saying that I'm trying to get people killed in the name of trans people. That's fucking ridiculous, my guy. I am just trying to get you to to use a word that accepts the 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 very risk uh, to people like me that is out there right now. There is legislation. Again, I'm trying to get you to use a word, but legislation being being proposed. There is legislation being passed. There are children being taken away from their parents in the state of Texas because. They are they are treating their kids for who they are, and you you're saying if I call it a genocide, I am therefore uh, required to what now go out and kill people uh, that are trying to kill me? Like like I don't understand. Oh my god, if that's your standard, then I guess uh, there will never be a genocide because you know I'm always going to be too afraid uh, to fight back against you know the 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 powers that be that are trying to get me i would yes what if somebody like me would rather run and hide uh you know in in a fucking attic somewhere does that make it not a genocide because other people are going to fight for me instead so where do we so i so wait so I, i'm going to assume you're saying then so you don't want to be pigeonholed into the person who wants to kill legislators i'm just you know i asked you a question no you're saying no, no okay I, okay you, you asked me a question dude. you asked me a question that's fine you said no okay personally um so I mean, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned, um, okay. Um, so that's the first time. The second time I bring it up is to argue about the effect her rhetoric might have on her audience instead. So I've, I've, I've accepted her answer at this point. I've accepted that she doesn't want to advocate for anything herself, um, even though the initial answer was a bit odd, but whatever, I'll take people at their word. Um, this is the second time. 
And the problem is, the reason I have a problem with the word genocide again is because when you use that language and you look at the way historically genocides have been responded to and the way that genocides are handled and the best way to handle genocides is that you've got people in your audiences who are very like vulnerable and are very like scared enough, are very scared as it is. And when you say these people want to kill you, then you are kind of quietly saying, if someone wants to kill you, um, the things that you should do in self-defense are things that you're not willing to say they should do. So she's already started saying run here. Again, that's an opportunity for her to say, no, I'm not up for violence. I'm just, I would rather run. She can just reject what I'm saying. Instead, uh, she says this. No, well, okay. Well, one, I don't want to violate terms of service, right? People, people who want to defend themselves. There you go, though. You just say you don't want to violate terms of service, though. So we know what you are okay with, right? No, 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 no. I do not want to violate. No, no. Uh, look, look, please do not push me to this direction. I told you my personal story. I think I talk to trans people all the time. Many of us are figuring out where the fuck we're going to run to. If she disagreed with my framing, all she needed to do was reject my premise. Instead, she said, I don't want to violate terms of service. When I responded by saying, we know what you are okay with, I deliberately spoke indirectly precisely to avoid TOS violations. If she had said yes to this question, she, she would have been able to voice that opinion and it wouldn't have broken TOS. When she answered with no and asked me not to push her in that direction, I accepted her answer and we moved on. The question of political violence never came up again. Th- those two clips are me, apparently, for, no, for some unspecified reason, just randomly trying to get a trans streamer banned. Those two questions. Now, if you talk about genocide, I think genocide typically, at least in every historical example I can think of, every genocide I can think of in history, the people who were victims had every moral right to basically use whatever means they could to um, stop the perpetrators. I don't think there's any example of a genocide where you would say that's not okay. So I think you kind of have, like, I think it's perfectly fair to bring up that question. Um, if you want to advocate for give your, or give your positions for political violence, you know, you can use euphemisms or you can uh, do indirect, in indirect ways the same like I tried to do here just to at least see if she had a position worth engaging with. But again, like if I, if I say it's, you're implying like violent actions against the legislators and she says, I don't want to break TOS. Like, to me, that sounds like a yes. But again, when she said no and don't push me, I just let her, I just left her, I just left it to go into the next topic. Like, so I don't know if you think, if like, if, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned, um, yeah, you do you. It's okay. Fine. It would, be, it would be worth asking here, if the only point in me bringing up political violence was for TOS bait, why did I also mention it before the call? Cultural, I don't know. I don't know what it would look like for trans people. I think, I think, no, actually I do. I think what you could call a cultural genocide of trans people, and I think this is the only, and I'm saying like a less than 1% chance, but the only chance I think of that happening is uh, like states start to sanction some kind of like forced conversion therapy for trans kids like they'll say that there's a big there's a there's a crisis of like a mental health crisis of trans kids and we need to save them by uh finding trans kids and bring them to conversion therapy camps so that they can like uh they can you know purge their fucking demons or get rid of the social contagion or whatever i think that would be i'd be like fuck you know that would be yeah that would be a cultural genocide yeah and if people wanted to take out, like we're taking up arms to f- standing in front of the, like the front doors of trans kids to protect them from that behavior, I'd be like, yeah, of course I wouldn't oppose that. You, you, they would, it's like the only chance they've got, right? Um, I know some people are thinking about Texas. Don't worry. We'll talk about Texas. Okay. Um, furthermore, why did I willingly stake my own positions on political violence, which were very close to being TOS violations? I think this is probably... Of this entire debate, the closest anyone came to breaking TOS was actually me. But okay. so okay. when it comes to domestically, the difference is is that I, like I, I feel like I'm more radical okay. than you now. Okay. I think if there's a genocide right. happening, hold on. Hold on. you should fucking like video game okay. the people who are doing the genocide. Hold on. Hold on. So so yeah. Yeah. 
President Sunday, among others, seemed convinced that my only intention with these questions was to get Polly to lose her channel. What's interesting to me is that this complaint, as far as I know, was never made to me by Polly herself. But we'll return to that later. Okay, let's go for this bit first. This is Doe. She didn't commit the violation. She rejected it multiple times. She said, no, I don't want to fight anyone. I want to run away. And he pressed her repeatedly. It was a disingenuous TOS bait. If you think, if you're starting to think this might be a little bit um, misrepresentative of the clips we just watched, um, there might be a common theme there, okay? I'm going to say this is not an accurate representation of what we just watched. All right. Uh, Sunday? Might as well read this whole thread. Uh, Lonerbox is now using a soundbite of me saying you laughed in the face of your last interlocutor in this issue in reference to his conversation with Polly, where he tried to bait her into a TOS violation and ridiculed her as a notification sound on stream. This is actually so dumb. If your belief is a TOS violation, why is that anyone's fault but yours or the platform? If I had an argument with someone who told me words don't mean anything and then they got banned because they said the N-word with a hard R, not my fault, theirs. Oh, I had, sorry. No one's belief were TOS violations. That's not what people are upset about. Please refrain from engaging until you've caught up with that minimum, the initial debate that sparked this all. Wow. Doe, I've watched the debate. I agree with Lona's position. I know Polly didn't violate TOS. She answered the line of questions where they were going and very strongly said she wasn't calling for violence. Villainizing a clear ally for asking reasonable questions for a serious topic is cruel. And this is Sunday. Don't play dumb. He framed his questions to get her to assume his premise that the term implied retaliatory violence as a given, so she'd be breaking TOS even by answering. That she had the wherewithal to avoid this isn't a defense of what Lonerbox was transparently trying to do. She's a fucking adult engaging a debate. If you want to cry that Lonerbox didn't go easy on her, say that with your chest. You and everyone alongside you are fucking disgusting for soaking these flames. There's plenty of real transphobia in the world, you bored fucking losers. Um, hey. Thanks, Cherry. Uh, okay. I imagine people might have been a little primed to assume that the reason for asking this question is to fed post because of this debate between Vosh and Rose Rist, where Rose asked the question, if it were possible to kill Republican lawmakers with no consequences, would it then be justified? Um, if you could, if it were to be possible to get away with, um, yeah, killing Republican lawmakers with no consequences, uh, would it then be? Are you at, be wait? Are you actually fed posting at me right now? You're glowing in this convo. Wait, are you being fed these questions? So you'll notice there that Rose said no consequences. The question's a little bit different, but yeah. It's likely the well might be a little poisoned around this issue because we now know that this question was sent to Rose by Destiny. I've been up given permission to share these, so. Um, oh dear. Maybe chat can go off for a minute. This is Destiny. Ask him this. If it did work out, if they were able to kill lawmakers with no consequences, would it be morally justified? Um, we'll ask. So you can see there, that's when the, this uh, line of messaging starts. Okay, that's really important. Interestingly enough, this was actually a follow-up question. The first time Rose asked this, albeit with the no consequences part, Vosh had no problem answering, and he also said he didn't feel like the question was TOS bait. Now this question, you'll notice, is a bit more similar to my one, right? Okay. So then if you believe that the Republicans have intent right now to, to, to bring about an LGBT genocide, uh, how can you morally object against people right now taking up arms and going out and killing Republican lawmakers? Uh, Republican lawmakers? Yes. Uh, well, it would be a utilitarian thing, wouldn't it? It would be if you could get better political outcomes from them doing so. Which, unfortunately, I don't really think it's possible to know that because I'm not God. But as a general rule, that type of thing doesn't... Okay. Uh, he said that type of thing doesn't work out as a general rule. Good answer, Vosh. Um, didn't feel like the question was TOS, but... Do you feel like any of the, the questions I'm asking you is like, are being asked in, in bad faith and I'm trying to bait you into like violating TOS or anything? No. Did I imply that? Okay. Uh, no, maybe I, I misunderstood. Do you feel like... Okay. So that first question to Vosh was fine. Um, contrary to popular opinion, this initial question did not originally come from Destiny. Let's just go popular opinion. That is a, that was like one of the dirtiest approaches I've seen. That is very much, uh, that is a, that is a, uh, that's characteristic of another streamer 
who do, who engages in bullshit like this against trans people. Yes, it's literally what Rose Wrist was trying to do to Vosh. I don't think that there's any surprise that both Rose Wrist and Loner Box borrowed directly from the playbook of fucking Stinky Steve. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, that original question, the same one I asked to Polly, actually came from a question I sent to Rose Wrist a week earlier when he was debating Nick Fuentes. So this is my DMs to Rose Wrist, 23rd of May. If you think they're trying to genocide you, isn't it right to kill them? Because if the answer is no, they're a bunch of cucks, Lamau. Obviously, I didn't use this one on a trans person because that's, you know, we, we treat people differently. Okay. Um, you can see here the debate with Fuentes. Um, where's the date? May 23rd, 2022. The Vosh debate was a week later, May 29th. This isn't a very exciting thing. I just thought you guys might want to know a bit more. Like, I, I have my own thoughts, believe it or not. That was my question. And my question, when Vosh was asked it, said he didn't feel like it was a TOS violation. The different question that Destiny asked was, if there were no consequences, would it then be okay to kill Republican lawmakers? And actually, just as a slight critique to Vosh, um, I don't think that's a very, I feel like he already answered that question because he said as a general rule, that thing doesn't work out. I would like to imagine if you're like a rule utilitarian, um, if you're a rule utilitarian, I'd probably say that if you're living, as long as you live in a democracy, you probably don't ever want it to be the case that people are out killing Republican lawmakers or any lawmaker. Probably just a rule people should avoid as long as you, there's like other forms of recourse in a democracy. Now, if you get into more authoritarian environments, well, the answer might get a little bit more pepe, but hmm, that's how I'd answer that anyway. I don't think it was a very difficult question. If people believe that my reason for bringing up violent action was to bait Polly into breaking TOS, they would also have to answer this. Why did I also discuss violent action on my stream before Polly came on? Could it not be that this was simply one of my arguments? Should I have refrained from making this point just on the off chance that Polly does have views that would break TOS and that she isn't clever enough to conceal them? I'm going to be quite blunt here to close this bit. Um, TOS bait isn't a real thing. It's not. If you don't want to answer a question that sounds like it might, that because your answer might be TOS or you're not imaginative, of, imaginative enough to come up with a euphemism or something, that's probably, like, if, if you'd answer a question like the one I asked, and just unwittingly break TOS, that's probably your own fault. Like, I'd, I, I wouldn't expect anyone I'm talking to to ever be that stupid, but okay. The second Polly debate. On November 1st, Polly unexpectedly appeared in my chat and asked for a second conversation. This one was far less combative than the first. She didn't say anything about me being cruel to her in our previous talk, nor did she bring up the issue of TOS baiting. Instead, the conversation was fairly cordial and we were a lot more understanding of each other's positions. I was a bit skeptical about her reading of the 10 stages of genocide, but I could see where she was coming from. What confuses me is that she made a couple of concessions in this talk that she seems to have already gone back on. I suggested this was something we could agree to disagree on and she seemed happy with that. She even titled her video on Twitch, I think this goes better. Uh, I think this goes better, discussion two. Me asking the question. Yeah, so I don't know if this counts as like a disagree, agree to disagree on some things, but not everything. It's all right. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, hey, I appreciate you talk. Yeah, okay. I asked her if people who disagree with using the word genocide belong in the same box as genocide deniers, to which she said, no, they don't. Do you think it's fair to say people who don't agree that there's a genocide happening right now are should belong in the same box as genocide deniers. No, 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 I wouldn't okay. say that. I, I would say no, no, no. I, I would say that because that carries an implication of like Holocaust denial and shit. Do you why she has since continued to attack me on Twitter and call me denial box? I can't really say. Denial box coping and seething about President Come Day, lol. Hmm. I mean, I can't even really get upset about this. Just kind of funny, but okay. <laughs> Just to reiterate one more time, the first two accusations made against me 
didn't actually come from Polly. I was probably going to get a few more clips about Polly because she streamed a lot of weird shit about me later on. Um, but I don't really like clipping people if I don't know that much about them. And I don't want to misrepresent them like they've had like a weird moment on stream or whatever. Um, so I just thought I'd leave it with, at that. I feel like when it comes to Polly, she's quite good at falling out with people by herself. So yeah, as far as I know, I thought me and her seemed to be on okay terms since the last talk, but who knows. Demon Mama. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't. Um, I tried to react. Demon Mama reacted to my debate with Polly a couple of days afterwards. I tried watching it a few times, but I just get like really distracted by some of her mannerisms. So, um, yeah, okay. In her response to my debate with Polly, Demon Mama has a habit of pulling the strangest faces even when what I'm saying is completely uncontroversial. This is just, I couldn't, like. All right, let's continue. Later after it's over, but, but that's not what, that's not what we need. Okay, first of all, when, okay, when camps were opening, yeah, you could, there was plenty of evidence to say that we're building up to a genocide and the urgency was there. Like, again, I, 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 just so they, you know, for my take on Germany, camps? I think the Allies should have intervened when the first camp, when the first camp opened before the annexation. So, no, yeah, actually, I'm would've... very for intervening as quickly as possible when that happens. I think that every government in the Allied states were too uh, slow, okay? So, no. I don't know why you think just because I'm contesting you on terminology means you think I'm less urgent about stopping the problem. I don't know like, why don't, you think that. <laughs> I don't, I'm giving an argument that's like anti-appeasement. I don't know why she's... And there's another one here. Um, side at least. Yeah, because I can tell you very clearly why I have a problem. And it's All because right. the way you respond to these things are different. If a state is committing genocide, say, for example, this, was, this is what justifies countries invading other countries. This is what justifies countries bombing other countries. This is the justification that was given in Libya. They said that Gaddafi was going to, he had genocidal intent. He was announced that he was going to genocide his own people. And then the, like, I think at this point, the whole idea of genocide being an international crime that's supposed to be enforced by the international community, like that's what it was for. Like both definitions were intended for that, and it's just like, this was. This is what justifies countries invading other countries. This is what justifies countries bombing just other countries. Bit shocked, but yeah, I don't know. We're gonna see a lot of that, and there's also, um, yeah, you're gonna see a bit of a common trend with those faces. All right. Throughout this video, Demon Mama consistently scoffs every time I bring up the idea of activists pushing against anti-trans laws at a state level. When I talk about recommending activist groups to people who want to get involved in stopping legislation, she seems unimpressed. If anyone uh, wants to engage in activism, if that's their thing, because there's lots of people who come to me like, you know, I want to get involved, I'll probably say like, well, Stonewall, <laughs> really good organization to volunteer for, uh, Mermaids, but all these organizations want volunteers. A lot of them are involved in fighting the legislation, uh, you know, going into... I don't know how it works over there, but the way it comes is like with councils, you can lobby and you can write. If anyone will shake the head there, um, let's see. She pulls another face when I talk about people lobbying against legislation in ways that are actionable within a liberal democracy. Research. Well, the way you respond to that is the way I think I advocate for is people getting involved in uh, pressure groups in political and charities and uh, lobbying and going to meetings and uh, lobbying MPs protesting civil like, yeah, things that you can do within a liberal democracy, like things that are just like actionable. If you think there it is, the legislators do this <laughs> because <laughs> they want to research. Well, okay. the way you um, interestingly, she takes Interestingly, she shakes her head at me advocating for activism within the law, even though Polly agrees with me immediately afterwards. If we're talking about, I guess you'd imagine we, the way to oppose this would be uh, lobby legislators, turn up to town hall meetings, I guess, in America, uh, help with... Uh, Do everything groups, you can within okay. the law, as many people did within the hmm. law uh, during previous genocidal events. If we're I don't really know how many genocidal events in the past were fought by acting within the law, but we'll see. All right. At least domestically. All right. In response to a chatter, she continues to mock the idea of political lobbying by doing a caricature of someone writing a letter to their genocidal congressman. Truth of what's letter. going on. Hey, again, everybody. Have you considered writing a letter to oppose the law that will ban you from getting health care? Have you considered writing a letter? Truth of what's I think if you were 
I think if you were contacting a legislator, you would probably contact the Democrat legislator who's opposing the bill. Um, or I don't know how it is in the US, but I'm pretty sure legislators work in public buildings. Like you can just go there and speak to them. But all right. Um, or I think there are, are there not states in America where you can just testify against any bill or for or against, you can testify towards any bill that's passing. Um, anyway, this dismissive attitude makes me wonder. Is Demon Mama completely unaware of the impact that legal and political activist groups have had in stopping anti-trans legislation? Um, a lot of people, I don't know, I feel like this is quite well known. This was uh, 2021 talking about bills restricting gender affirming care for trans youth. There are two here that uh, were enacted. Look at the, all the other ones that failed. And these are mostly in Republican majority states. And it's been like this this year as well. The vast majority of these bills are being po pushed through Republican states and they're failing. And the reason they're failing is because activist groups turn up and testify against them and pressure to stop them. It's like, I don't understand, like, because I feel like, isn't that one, um, isn't that like a criticism we normally make of politicians is that they're careerists. They don't really care that much about uh, ideology. They don't really have that much conviction. They just do what they're pressured to. Um, like, yeah, there are loads of stories about this as well. There's like, there was a bill in, I think it was Ohio that didn't go through because a Republican majority board flipped their votes after hearing testimony from trans activists. Like the amount, like people can go and turn up and say like, um, you know, I'm trans, this is how this legislation will affect me. And a lot of the time, a lot of the Republican legislators, uh, involved, uh, in those votes have probably never seen a trans person before. Like, like that, it does, it does actually impact the laws even in red majority states. So, yeah. Or is this the kind of action you would be inclined to ignore if you believed Republicans were legislating because they want you dead? Not wanting to jump to conclusions about this, I looked at Demon Mama's stream on transgenocide, which does have a segment entitled, What Can Be Done? Here's the segment. Um, You can see there what can be done. It's like a four or five minute segment after she made her case for the trans genocide ongoing. This is just. Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time right now talking about what can be done. This is not going to be a part of the formal video because I don't. I want the video to be very pinpointed and focused in its in its goal. But um, I I want people to realize there's a lot that can be done to resist this sort of thing. Um, I don't know why I bother clipping that. I've noticed when watching Demon Mama's debates that every time she says there's a lot that can be done, she usually only mentions like one or two things at most. But yeah. um, After saying there are a lot of things that can be done, she gives two examples. One, connect with other trans people online and offline. Well, okay. All good. Uh, two, a vague allusion to mutual aid with this example before she goes on to talk about helping with fundraisers for people who are trying to leave states like Florida. Yeah, this was a bit weird. I don't really know what she's getting Thanks. at here. Uh, the mutual aid aspect is going to be incredibly, incredibly important. And it should not be un understated how much uh, simple acts of mutual aid in the past have saved lives. Keep in mind that when we talk about the Holocaust, we often talk about um, we often talk about the fact that people hid Jewish people in their attic. That is a simple act of mutual aid that saves a group that can save a life of many people. I don't want to like. I'm not. Um... I'm not like an anarchist. I don't know theory that well. I don't know if hiding Jews in your attic was mutual aid. I, th I've, I always thought something like that would just be aid. But the more broad thing is here is once you've got the language of genocide, it just I feel like it leads you to all these paths that are just so, that have nothing to do with the situation America's in. Um, like if you're talking about anti-trans legislation, it's, it's very difficult to downplay it to understate how bad it is. I don't really think you should ever need to bring up the Holocaust in comparison to it though. I feel like, I feel like bring like the Holocaust is just such a useless allegory to like trans legislation in the United States right now. But yeah, but that's going to come up a lot as well. But I don't even disagree with her uh, with either of these, but I do find it strange that she would be so dismissive of groups that have been so crucial in fighting these laws. In her reaction to my debate, she seems far more interested in more physical forms of action. When I tried to ask Polly what exactly it is she thinks people like me should be doing differently, 
Demon Mama adopts Polly's position and says, I should call it a genocide. She then goes on to say that she wishes cis people would push back harder against transphobia while someone in her chat says, TOS prevents me from giving an accurate prescriptive statement on how to stop a genocide. But I guess if it's a genocide, that action is insufficient then, is it? What, what, what should I do? What, what more should I do? Uh, you should at least be willing to call it Wait, hold on. This is a weird direction. He's being super defensive here. What more should I do? Well, call it a genocide. Call it what it is, dude. Don't fucking, don't fucking split hairs when trans people are telling you that this is an attempted genocide and there are ongoing aspects of genocide. No one's asking you to do anything else, although I would certainly appreciate it if cis people would, uh, you know, push back a little harder. Just a little bit harder against transphobia. You know, just a little harder. You know, a little bit of rip and tear. Okay. Oh yeah, there's someone in chat. Should have pointed that out, okay. Um, yeah, okay. She uncritically agrees with a chatter who says I'm only in denial because I'm too cowardly to give up my comfortable life and take action. The state elimination of, of elimination of the lives of. 85D2D Derek with the $5. It sounds like Lonerbox is in denial because he's scared of the implications. He would be morally obligated to give up his comfortable life and take action or accept that he's a coward. True. The state. Now, okay, this is where I think, fuck me. Um, I don't think it's that difficult to give your prescriptions on political violence without breaking TOS. Like this vagueness is so, I've given this, look, I've given this multiple times. I'll do it one more time. Um, I have said constantly that um, if there was ever a situation, say like there were anti-LGBTQ riots uh, up and down America, or even just in one town, and they were coming to smash up safe spaces or to attack houses or attack people in the street, then yeah, like defend yourself by any means necessary. Like I would never oppose that. Like that, may, that, that makes perfect sense to use violence in that situation. Same thing with Texas. If Texas ever succeeds in um, like a state conversion therapy program where they're dragging kids out of their houses and taking them to get converted out of being trans and you need to escape that state and you might need to, uh, <laughs> uh, you might need to video game some uh, agents of the state on the way. Yeah, I wouldn't oppose that either. The fact, why are these people being so vague about what they want people to do? Um, I know the answer. It's because they're fucking LARPers. But like, if you look at this quote here as well, like, it sounds like I'm in, this is Demon Mama agreeing with this. Like, it sounds like I'm in denial because I'm scared of the implications. I would be morally obligated to give up my comfortable life and take action. Motherfucker, what action? Like, first of all, I live in fucking Scotland, okay? I'm not even from America. Are you suggesting that, like, my moral compass dictates that every time there's a genocide going on, I have to get my fucking tin hat and my big boots and go over there and, like, sort it out myself? Is that what you're doing? Is this what fucking 8D, 5D2 Derek is doing? Is, are you fucking, like, there's a genocide happening right now in West Sudan. Are you fucking, like, are, have you been motivated recently to just jump over there and get all fucking rip and tear? Go for a fucking rumble tumble with the cartoon government? Probably not. Like. You're in a fucking stream chat, giving money. You LARPing fuck. Anyway, sorry. The hol oh, we'll get to the Holocaust. Don't worry, Silverheart. Um, whew. When I make the point that genocides are descriptively different and require different solutions, she immediately makes up her mind and decides that I'm doing the Rosarys thing before I've even asked the question. So again, the Fed, post the Fed posting thing, this is how quickly Demon Mama makes up her mind about my intentions being to ban this streamer. That's the hard. reason I get pedantic about that difference is because the way you approach both of those issues is very different. One of them, I think the, the former one, of, because they- Oh no, is he about to do the rose wrist thing? Is he about to do- That was it. Do the rose wrist thing? Where he goes, if I admit that it's a genocide, then I have the responsibility to act more fiercely to rip and tear mm. and i don't want to think that i'm at the point in history where i should be considering ripping and tearing 
Oh, man. They are Dude. stupid and uninformed and have bad research. Well, the way in uh, this lobbying this? and... Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, she follows this up once again, suggesting I'm at a point in history where I need to rip and tear. Again, if you have a position on rip and tear, use a euphemism, use your imagination, and explain to me how it would work. That's all I want to know, okay? Given that this is over the topic of killing Republican lawmakers, like, how fucking stupid would that be? If you can't give a very categorical no to that suggestion, like, if that happened, the Republicans would win a majority, like, overnight. They'd have no problem. Like, they would ride that all the way into the polls, like, immediately. It's just such a stupid suggestion. Anyway, um, unless, I don't know, I, I, I'll, I'll never know what rip and tear means, because they'll never elaborate on that. All right. I don't think it's an accident, unless, like, I can imagine maybe someone coping here and saying something like, um, like Stonewall, but again, Stonewall made sense. They were being physically attacked in their space. They were raided by the police for no fucking reason. Of course it makes sense to use physical force like back again. I think there might be this thing where a lot of people, especially in the anarchist sphere, uh, act as if there's no difference between systemic and physical violence. But yeah, well, that's going to be a common thread. I don't think it's an accident that people like Demon Mama are unwilling to outline their positions on violence, something which is easy enough to do with euphemisms, or to at least explain exactly how said positions would be helpful. Until she is able to explain exactly how a bit of the old rip and tear would work, or how it would be helpful at this point in time, I think people can safely call this nothing more than a LARP that she hasn't given any real thought to. I have, on multiple occasions, openly given my line for when I think violence against the state or even against other civilians would be morally acceptable. As I've made clear, I don't believe that point is now. However, if Demon Mama or 8D5D2 Derek want to explain to me how want to explain to me how going to the states and beating the shit out of transphobes or whatever else they're alluding to will help anyone, I'm more than happy to listen. Uh, since we're amplifying small trans voices. I want to give this honorable mention to a uh, Twitter user called Powerbot in Politics on this topic. If you're going to go and tell people that they should rise up, do it. Uh, Oliver is a trans man. He, I'm sorry. Your fucking self and stop telling. We'll go from the start. Sorry. I don't want to disrupt the flow. If you're going to go and tell people that they should rise up, do it your fucking self and stop telling me what to do with my fucking life. It's like you got to utilize your platform for this, that, and the other fucking thing. You Utilize your platform to help me wipe my ass. But then the second it's like, well, uh, we, we got to start rioting and fight for our rights. Oh, but me, I'm just going to keep streaming. That's my contribution to this. I turn on a camera every day. You... Quit your job and go, like, drive to the Supreme Court and fucking, like, throw rocks at b cops with guns. Me? I'll just shit- I'll, I'll just, you know, stream a video while I'm taking a shit. That's my contribution to the movement. Fuck you. Fuck you. If you- I like that guy. It's funny. Demon Mama also seems to have a very idiosyncratic view of what constitutes a genocide. She hints at me being the genocide-denying type and argues that trans people who disagree on there being an ongoing genocide are also in denial. Galay, Galay says, how could Loderbox think this way? He's been so based on so many issues, I'm shocked he's saying this shit. I was honestly surprised too. I never took him for like, I never took him for the like genocide-denying type or the genocide downplaying, which is a form of genocide denial. I never, I never took him for that type. Unfortunately, uh oh. I have learned better. I have learned over time. Uh, I have grown, uh, I, I've grown more wise, and I have learned uh, that uh, there is a certain death orbit, and that death orbit can do horrible, horrible damage to people's otherwise based opinions. The way these people talk about Dustin is so fucking weird. Anyway, um, Trans people are also in denial if they don't agree. No, but you can say, but you were, you were talking as if you were, as if you're like, the genocide thing is like me uh, refusing to listen to trans voices and all that. But I, I can fucking dig up, like, I, can, I can fucking pull forth like a few, quite a few trans people who don't like the word genocide either. So it's not like... It doesn't matter if they like it. Trans people can also be in denial. There's a lot of trans people who don't recognize how bad things are. Okay. 
I find it odd that she would be this confident in her take because of how she approached the topic. It's very likely that she just learned the UN definition of genocide in the middle of her stream. At one point, she even agrees with Polly's take that any form of systemic discrimination that leads to people dying would constitute a genocide, and then goes on to bring up the definition in an attempt to debunk my understanding of the claim. In responding to people him. die because of wait, systemic- Wait, what did I say there? Term, sorry. Idiot. In responding to people him. die because of systemic discrimination, that's not genocide, no. It, how is yes, that not is. genocide? If people die as a result of systemic yes, discrimination- That's okay. in the definition of genocide. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. This is pathetic. Can we, wait, 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 can we just- okay, can you just uh, Under color right? of law? Just, wait. Wait, 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 sorry, I, I, can, I just want to do a debunk. I don't, I don't, I, I'm feeling a little paranoid here because I know people are going to react to this and I want to just prove to you what I'm talking about. I just had this up. Hold on, let me just show you again, one more time, just so that we're clear. I'm going to hold, I'm going to show this up right here. What we, what he just said was that a law that, a uh, uh, legal discrimination that leads to death is not genocide. I'm sorry, but the UN literally disagrees with you. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. This is Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Going slower, Article 2 of the Genocide Convention narrows it also including deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. Loner Box is wrong. Loner Box is wrong even by his own definition. This is phenomenally stupid. Phenomenally stupid. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I feel like if you're paranoid about people reacting to your take, maybe you could probably like... I don't know what concepts on earth you would, you would never do this with any concept. Like imagine if I just looked up the definition of anarchism and then acted like I knew what anarchism was off the words in the definition. Um, why would you do that? And I feel like if you're in a position where you're literally looking up the UN convention, like an international crime and saying that every form of systemic discrimination which gets people killed which would be all systemic discrimination, like all systemic discrimination either like results in hate crimes or uh, suicides or lowered life expectancies or health issues, like all these kind of things. Like every marginalized group on earth is dying, like has people who die that they wouldn't have otherwise because of discrimination. Like that's just not like, but like, why would you do that? I feel like the international community is going to be very busy. Like what would that look like? Just every country just policing each other for every form of discrimination or systemic racism. Like, uh, it's so stupid. Um, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this is Jordan Peterson's level of reading comprehension. Demon Mama is using exactly the same thought process that led Peterson to believe that C-16 would make misgendering illegal. Remember how Peterson said that C-16 would lead to people being jailed for misgendering because they would make misgendering illegal? Um, if the page ever loads. Why not? Why is that not the case? It protects trans people from discrimination. Is misgendering not a form of discrimination? Why wasn't it made illegal? Why is it not illegal to misgender someone in Canada? That's because discrimination has, like, a more narrow meaning under law. Like, there's precedent. And this isn't even a question of law, by the way. Like, this is also, it's also just like a general question of language. Um, if you were going to look up the definition of a chair and just go by the words of, de of the definition and shoehorn everything that fits the words, a horse would be a chair. Like, a separate seat for one person, typically with a back and four legs. Like, a horse with a saddle on it would be a chair. The reason it's not, again, like, I've explained this with the whole Wittgenstein thing as well, is like, a word gets its use not just from the definition, but from it gets its meaning from use. So, oh God, it's so stupid. All right. For another example, Demon Mama's approach here is a mirror image of Count Dankula trying to interpret a hate speech law. This is one to one, by the way. Like, right, but anyway, this is uh, the gist of what is going to happen with this law. Um, 
Adding age as a new characteristic in connection with the aggravation of offences by prejudice under part one of the bill. Basically, if you call someone an old fuck, or I don't know, maybe even if you say something like, you don't understand just now, you'll understand when you're older. <sighs> Ageism, jail. <laughs> Creating new offences related to stirring up hatred. What is stirring up hatred? What could constitute as stirring up hatred? Is that going to be clarified? Is that going to be set out as a set definition? So, for example, if I said something like, fuck the SNP, would that stir up hatred? He's doing the faces as well. He's doing the little frowny detective face. That, yeah. He's just, he's just, inter he's, yeah, he's just doing the exact same thing Demon Mom is doing. He's just taking the words in the law and just arbitrarily doing his own interpretation of it. That's all, that, that's all both of them are doing. Stirring up hatred in practice basically just means inciting violence against a marginalized group. That's what you have to do to stir up hatred. I think we get like nine convictions a year on average in Scotland for stirring up hatred because the threshold is so high. So I feel like if you wanted to learn a concept, whether it's like genocide or Marxism or anarchism or hate speech, like you would probably want to read like an article about it or even just the Wikipedia. Don't just grab the definition and just decide arbitrarily the meaning of everything. Like it's, yeah, because that's where you end up. You end up saying that genocide and systemic discrimination are just like, what, the same thing? All right. I'm aware that Demon Mama can just hedge her bets here and say she doesn't actually care about the UN definition of genocide, or at least she seems to only care about it for as long as she thinks it supports her point. So she says here with Sunday. I just brought up the exact page that he had that he kept referencing the yeah. UN Convention on Genocide. Yeah. And even in there, they're very clear that like the they're, they're they take pains to say that like the Genocide Convention uses the most narrow definition, the most narrow popular definition yeah. of genocide. And even then, I believe that it's very easy to make a case for an ongoing active ongoing genocide in the United States based on the UN's uh 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 you know parameters but on top of that who the fuck cares about exactly what the un thinks a genocide yeah. is i just brought i feel like i mean if you don't care about the un definition you can just say that like but it's also just like acting like it supports you for as long as you think it does yeah okay if she wants to have that position she can go ahead but if you are going to interpret the definition in that way you aren't really appealing to that definition at all at this point, what you're appealing to is private language. This would raise the question, how are you deciding what is and isn't a genocide? If your understanding of genocide is that it's synonymous with any form of discrimination that gets people killed, which would encompass all systemic discrimination, what is the value in using the word at all? Demon Mama and the Holocaust. Oh God. We're ready for a bit of a circus show here. All right. The third accusation made against me from my debate with Polly was over my views on the Holocaust, specifically my assertion that the genocide of the Jews by Nazi Germany was carried out between 1941 and 1945. First of all, we're using the word genocide of the Jews here, okay? Um, genocide and Holocaust are slightly different terms, and some people use them synonymously. Some people say that they're a bit different uh, because they describe different periods, but we'll get into that. Okay. First, let's look at how this question came up. When I asked Polly if she could give me examples of Republicans who want to kill trans people, she argued that this was an unfair question. After all, why would they be open about their intent? I responded by offering her some leeway and explained that intent can be inferred. I used the example of how Hitler didn't publicly express a desire to kill Jewish people until the war, but that the intent could have been inferred from as early as 1919. For some reason, Polly decided to move off the topic of intent and asked me when I thought the genocide of the Jews began. I was hesitant over this question because I know the answer is more nuanced than she would be willing to admit. I said 1941 because that seemed like the clearest cutoff point. Okay. Wait, can yeah. you, okay, can you tell me which legislature... You've seen this quote before, so we'll just go into... What did I just say? Uh, wait, wait, what did I just say? Okay, so uh, what I think you said is that Hitler had genocidal intent before... Wait, when, when would you say the... Ge, uh, when would you say the genocide of the Jews actually happened? Or, or started? No, no, wait, that's not... The, the question is whether or not the intent... When the intent showed, right? 
So again, trying to keep her on topic. But okay. And well, now I'm interested in your answer to my question. Well, the signs of the intent were there from like 1919 when Hitler wrote that thing about yeah, removal. Yeah, yeah. But when war. would you say? When would you say, according to you? Are you trying you- to get, maybe take note of how confident Polly sounds here, um, and how you know? Despite what other people were saying, how, you know, maybe not so good faith. She's Wait, are you trying to get me into a gotcha to say when the genocide started? No, well, I want to know your answer. It's not okay, gotcha. so if I say I anything later, that, no, you are, don't lie to me. If I say okay, anything, well, if I say anything later than 1933, when the Nazis got elected, you've got a dunk, right? That's how, that's the kind of level we're operating at right now? Are you unwilling to answer the question? What day? No, I'm not willing. I think the genocide started in 1941. Final solution implemented and ordered in 1941. Okay, so, so... Okay. Demon Mama believes this is an idiotic position. I, I would be surprised if, if, it is a, if it is a commonly accepted point of view that the German genocide of the Jews didn't, didn't start until 1941. That seems like that seems he reiterated that twice. It's an idiotic it's position. Literally impossible to me. Okay. I don't know how many references I would need to bring up until she admits she was wrong about this, but here are a few. Let's go through a few, shall we? We already remember the one this kind of suggests uh, from the 10 stages of genocide. He says this in the essay as well, suggesting that the genocide is being planned at stage seven. The genocide they refer to is the final solution. Genocidal massacres begin, so we go from final solution being planned to beginning at eight. Bearing in mind, remember the definition under international law was genocide is killing people. The state organized killing people. Okay, let's go with this next one from the Anne Frank House. Um, The decision to resort to genocide. Historians disagree about the moment when Hitler decided that all European Jews should be killed. A signed order does not exist. However, based on some other sources and events, there is a strong likelihood that the decision was made somewhere in the second half of 1941. Um, You can go to the Wikipedia, I guess, 1941-45, to Genocide of the European Jews. Um, This is from the Wiener Holocaust Library. This is like, I think they're they're either one of or the oldest Holocaust library in the world. in 1941, the Nazis' persecution of the Jews became a genocide. See, persecution and genocide are separate because they were different events. In just under four years, millions of people were deliberately murdered at the hands of the Nazis and their collaborators. This mass murder became known as the Holocaust. This is from a book um, called Teaching the Holocaust, um, the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, the government-funded charity um, between 41 45. I can go a bit quicker. This is an article from JSTOR. Um, Genocide, was it the original plan by Yehuda Bauer, very um, prominent Holocaust historian. You can see here, when they talk about the plan, they're talking about the final solution because the final solution was the genocide. Okay, We'll read that article a bit more later. Holocaust Encyclopedia. Um, So this is where people are maybe getting a bit confused. If someone Googles the Holocaust, you'll get different answers because some people use the Holocaust synonymous with the genocide, 41 to 45. Others will say it was the period of uh, physical state violence against Jews, which was Kristallnacht onwards. And others will say it was just the entire process of persecution to violence to genocide, which is 33 to 45. Anyway, uh, why did I link this one? Oh right, yeah, the final solution was the organized and systemic mass murder of European Jews. The Nazi uh, German regime implemented this genocide between 41 and 45. Uh, what we got here? This is a Google book. Um, euthanasia to the final solution, the origins of Nazi genocide. So when they say euthanasia here, they're referring to action T4, which was when Hitler um, ordered, that's his order there, the killing of a third of a million disabled and mentally ill people. Uh, Yeah, September 39. Um, That was, so the question was genocide of the Jews. There is a bit of a gray area with, uh, no, I'll get to that later. Never mind. Um, But yeah, final solution in the euthanasia. Those are the two genocides. One against disabled and mentally ill people, the other against Jews. Uh, Okay. What we got here says, again, just the contention about 
what people refer to with the Holocaust. Um, the term Holocaust uh, is most commonly used to refer to the genocide in which approximately 6 million Jews were systematically executed in concentration camps like Dachau, Auschwitz, and Bergen-Belsen. Some of these camps were opened earlier uh, than 41, but they were opened as concentration camps. They were later, the death camp facilities were usually added on, and that was from 41 afterwards. Yeah, concentration camp and death camp is not the same thing, okay? This is from Richard J. Evans. He was actually the historian who testified against David Irving in the uh, Holocaust denial trial in England. There's a whole film about him, um, genocide. He wrote the book as well, Lying About Hitler. And when he's talking about, um, sorry. Yeah, genocidal ambitions in Eastern Europe, you know, Soviet Union invasion, 1941. Again, like, Pretty synonymous. And then here, it's another one from Evans about the final solution. And he constantly refers to final solution here as the genocide, like their complicity in the genocide. Yeah, you can read this oral article if you want. They, uh, they had no real understanding. This is about talking about local Germans, I think. Um, unprecedented act. Yeah, okay. So now that we know, fun fact as well, after our debate, Despite acting as if she had caught me out on this point and accusing me of equivocating very offensively on the start of the genocide of Jews in Germany, this is Polly after the debate, he equivocates very offensively on the start of genocide of Jews in Germany. Um, she's actually using the word equivocate properly there. Like, equivocate doesn't mean equate. Equivocate means um, trying to conceal your ideas or trying not to implicate yourself. But despite that, Polly herself admitted to her chat that she didn't even know whether or not I was right. Uh, uh, every time I see the dude's face, I get irrationally angry. Like, I was... <laughs> Is he right about the Holocaust? <laughs> like, 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 I don't know. Like, that, that just seems wild to me. Somebody would... <laughs> I think we all voted on! Um, I feel like... You know how video essayists make really bad uh, critiques of debate bro culture or debate pervert culture for being gender neutral? This is probably quite a good example of being, in, being overly confident about your take in the middle of a debate only to second guess yourself afterwards. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, without even bothering to check whether or not there was any merit in what I was saying, Demon Mama spends the rest of the stream getting increasingly excited and attempts to drop a series of bizarre statements and counterarguments. She agrees with a chair who makes the point that the final solution was not the start. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. This is really funny. Somebody in Poly People's chat says, the final solution was not the start of the genocide. That's such a good, that's such an excellent point. The person she's quoting in chat doesn't even say that. You can see him here. He just says final solution was not the start. She added in of the genocide because she's like, you know, because she's seeing what she wants to say. Point. They. L that's such a good, that's such an excellent point. They, l the Nazis literally called it the final solution, implying they had tried other solutions before. Oh God. Oh, liberals are so lost. They're the faces get a little bit more animated near the end of this. I feel like she's really close to getting it there. Like, the final solution was the genocide and the other solutions were, you would call them ethnic cleansing. That's what they want. They wanted to move them out. Like, you know, those are different things. But, um, if you want a justification for why they should be seen as different things, um, the way you would pursue recourse for ethnic cleansing is probably different from genocide. Like, if an ethnic cleansing happens, you would advocate for, like, right of return or refugee rights or something like that. Obviously with genocide, it's a bit different, but okay. Um, yeah, there's a whole article about this. The one I brought up from Yehuda Bauer um, about how genocide wasn't the Nazis' original plan. Their original plan was emigration or forced emigration. And he actually goes through this to talk about how, although there's a bit of a gray area, when the Nazis invaded Poland, they, they, can, they carried out massacres that were targeted towards uh, Polish intellectuals and thought leaders and political opponents of the Nazis, um, a disproportionate amount of those deaths were Jews. So I don't know if like Tannenberg has been called like a genocide of the Jews. It probably has. I think I've heard it like once or twice. 
can't really remember. But Nazi policy, and this whole paper goes through that, is um, up until 1940 or early 41 was still emigration. So their official policy um, up until 1940, were, there were two plans. One was uh, Nisko Madagascar, where they wanted to send them to Madagascar. The other one was, um, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Jacques Drouble, which is, this was their plan, it's a bit less known, where they wanted to uh, deport their Jewish prisoners over to uh, the Allies, to the Allied States. The idea was that they thought if a bunch of Jewish refugees turned up in the UK or the US or whatever, that would uh, get the British or the American public to sympathize with the Nazi cause if they had a bunch of Jewish refugees arrive. But yeah, so um, this paper is really, really interesting. Um, even at the end, and oh yeah, also like in 1940 as well, there was like a memorandum from Himmler where he openly rejected mass killing. And by 1940, even Heydrich was still calling it the territorial final solution. It was in 41, just around the time of the invasion of the USSR. That was when it changed. If you're going to bring up the Einsatzgruppen, yeah, they were, they targeted Jews. They were mobilized against Jews in 1941 in the summer. Yeah. Here. The last alternative was the final solution, which took form in 41 with the adoption of the Einsatzgruppen plan for the mass murder of Jews in Russia. Yeah. So I think that covers everything. This, the, near the end of this paper, there's a really, really interesting part, like really spicy as well where um, Yehuda Bauer actually suggests that the, um, that the final solution wasn't even inevitable by 39 or 40. He actually argues that um, one of the reasons it happened was because other countries in Europe were just unwilling to take Jewish refugees. He actually blames anti-Semitism across all of Europe for the reason that the Nazis had that many prisoners that they decided to kill them instead of try to move them out. Which is a pretty uh, bold take, but yeah, this guy is like a really, like a high up historian on Holocaust. He's like really well known. Uh, the reason I'm being so thorough on this, by the way, is just because like, um, fuck, like I've never really tried to present myself as like an exceptionally intelligent person. Like I'm not. Um, what I think I'm maybe good at is that I put like, I put like a lot of work and a lot of effort into the takes that I come out with. Like I second guess I second guess myself like constantly. I'm always like trying to make sure I've got multiple sources or uh double checking things and try and every time I say something I think is not true, I'll say I'm not sure or maybe this is wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I do try really hard to get things right because you know like it's just but the fact that me and Demon Mama have like an audience overlap and the fact that that whole thing just gets kind of like shat on in the eyes of a few audience members or like four or 5,000 audience members just because this charlatan hack fuck wanted to get some dunks for her stream. Like, it's, it's really fucking irritating, but... Okay. She agrees with another chatter who accuses me of using the same logic as Chomsky and Tankies. Hippie Punk says, this is the same logic that that Chomsky uses to say that Srebrenica wasn't a genocide and what Tankies used to blow off Xinjiang. This is not a road to go down. I agree. Srebrenica. Um, Chomsky said Srebrenica wasn't a genocide because they only killed men. Like, that's a... I mean, <laughs> he just completely ignored the fact that actually in most genocides, the victims are mostly men because the women are raped. He just ignored it. Like, he also said that the concentration camps in Bosnia that had torture chambers in them were actually refugee camps. Um, when tankies talk about Xinjiang, they'll just say all the information they don't like that proves genocide is Western, or they'll try to discredit one of the people spokesmen for the UN because it's like, um, because he was a Christian or something. Like, really? That's what I'm doing? Okay, fuck. Even as I tried to qualify the point that before 1941, the genocide was set in motion, the conditions were laid for it, or that they were on the precipice, both Polly and Demon Mama completely ignore this, and Demon Mama decides to accuse me of downplaying and genocide denial. I mean... <laughs> Liberals are so lost. There was already like... Uh, well, I guess there wasn't the... There were... 
there was already laws I being passed to trying appalling. to eliminate. You would just say, you would say that mean, it was set in motion. Like the conditions were laid for it. They, they were on there the was law. Like, no, what? no, but like, like, like no, there were already Jews dying. That's, be- if you were to say, if you were, if this was a conversation only about the Holocaust, all of this would be considered genocide denial because it is because it's downplaying the very real threat. We only have this in hindsight because the Holocaust already happened. I mean. The real threat of what? Threat of genocide? Uh, Oh, fuck. Um, I guess that's probably quite a lot of historians and Holocaust libraries that probably need to get held up for um, for genocide denial, but... She agrees with another chatter, who says, My opinion on when a genocide starts, and apparently also that of every source I've posted above, is similar to what the Nazis do with Holocaust denial. Yeah. Uh, Killjoy 40k says what Lonerbox is doing is 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 similar to what Nazis do with Holocaust denial. I don't think he's doing it deliberately, but he's made a goalpost that can't be met except in hindsight, meaning nothing is a genocide until after it's already too late. Yeah. She even says there, nothing is a genocide until it's deemed one, but she changes that into it, it's already too late. I, in this debate, I mentioned examples of preventing genocide. This hindsight argument is so weird. Like, does she just think that? I'm of the persuasion that states should just put their feet up and chill and stay at brunch until the genocide starts. I, it's, I don't understand it. Like, it's so fucking weird. All right. The point she makes about hindsight is also strange since I mentioned at least twice that Allied intervention was justified before the invasion of Poland. And I already mentioned that genocidal intent could have been inferred before the Nazis took power. Is she trying to imply that I'm pro-appeasement? that I don't believe in states taking measures to prevent genocides before they happen? Um, the answer to that is no. I think it's just like a very hollow critique with no thought behind it. Um, she seems pretty excited to learn about the Dachau concentration camp, which opened in 1933. You want, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be funny if there was something I had in my back pocket? Anybody want to guess when the first when the first concentration camp for Jewish people, communists, and other dissidents opened? Anybody want to guess? Can we get a guess? Oh, 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 22nd of March, 1933. But guess what? According to Lonerbox, the genocide didn't start until 1941. What a moron. Dachau, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I apologize. I've literally never heard that word said out loud, I don't think, or at least I haven't in my mind. You want, wouldn't So again, I know it's difficult to hear, but like genocide and concentration camps for political prisoners, I think Dachau was, they're not the same. It's not the same thing. Like, if you want to know why, again, you can just think about it. Like if, um, if you had two criminals in front of you or two bad guys, so let's say one of them is an overseer from the Japanese internment camps in America, and the other one is like Rudolf Hess, the guy in charge of Auschwitz-Birkenau. I don't think he would. I don't think he would convict those two guys of the same crime. Like, one would be guilty of genocide, the other would be guilty of like human rights abuses. You know. This is despite me saying earlier in the debate that some kind of intervention was justified as soon as the first camp opened. Once again, Demon Mama isn't interested in this point. This is what I do think she learned about Dachau like in the middle of the stream, because when I say when the first camp opened, uh, that was a, enough. That was a point to justify intervention. She just like she looks kind of shocked, like as if to suggest that's too late. I don't know. All right, let's continue. Later after it's over, but but that's not what that's not what we need. Okay, first of all, when, okay, when camps were opening, yeah, you could, there was plenty of evidence to say that we're building up to a genocide and the urgency was there. Like, again, I, 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 just so they, you know, for my take on Germany, camps? I think the Allies should... I don't know what she's saying there, but it sounds like she's saying when they built camps, as if that's, like, too late. They've intervened when the first camp opened. I don't know if maybe the Allies should have intervened when uh, Germany was still a democracy. Uh, the first camp opened before the annexation. So no, yeah, actually, I'm would've... very for intervening as quickly as possible when that happens. I think that every government, why, why the face? What the fuck? In the so Allied weird. States. It's like she just does them when she remembers to. We're too slow, okay? So no, I don't know why you think just because I'm 
contesting you on terminology means you think I'm less urgent about stopping the problem. I don't know why. Oh, there's another that. one. What? All right. This is the, the climax of the fucking circus show. She decides to uh, blow me out with possibly the strangest dunk of 2022. Okay, uh, hold on. I just want to blow him out again one more time. Do it. Just so, just so we're clear, the UN Convention on Genocide was not even put into law until December 9th, 1948. According, he, he just, let's just rewind here. I just want you guys to hear how fucking right I am and how fucking right poly people is on this. Listen to this real quick. Let's just listen to this back. It was, listen it up. didn't start until 1941. That seems like, that seems literally impossible to me. It's, it, when, according to what, like legal definitions or? According to what legal definitions? Guess what, bitch? The legal definition you're using, the, the Holocaust at the time, could not be considered a genocide because the UN fucking assembly on genocide did not happen until December 9th, 1948. What are you talking about? Okay. What? It um, the word genocide was coined to describe the Holocaust and the Armenian genocide. Like, you can retroactively call something a genocide. You can, you can convict people that's like, okay, yeah, the Nazis were convicted of crimes against humanity, not genocide, because it wasn't there until 48. But we're talking about describing it. She asked me when the genocide of the Jews started. And I said 48, like, yeah. And I said 41 because we're talking retroactively. You know, like, murders happened before murder was a crime before it was enshrined in law, and we can call them murders. Same with genocides. Um, I don't know if this is just like, people, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. After taking a minute, she decides to take this one step further. You, you, wanna, you, wanna, go even, you wanna go one further? You wanna go one further? You ready, you ready to go one step further? Genocide is the intentional destruction of a people usually classed as ethnic, national, racial, or religious in whole or in part. Raphael Lemkin coined the term in 1944. The term genocide did not even exist at the time that he's talking about. So all of this stupid semantic nonsense is a bunch of fucking hot air. The definition didn't even exist, so it wouldn't fucking matter if you called it a genocide or not. The terms, the legal terms, didn't exist at the time. Loner Box's argument is so upside down in this conversation. It's so ass backwards. You, you want to... You, like, you know what's really fucking sad about that bit? Is that she has the screen up not only on the Wikipedia, not only does it mention genocides that happened and are recognized in the 18th and 19th century and under the Ottomans. She, see what it says there? I don't know if you can see that. You might have to zoom in for World War I. You see the year there? World War I started in 1939. Um, they're not talking about when the war started. They're talking about the, the genocide, because the the Wikipedia for genocide. Like, what the fuck is happening inside this head? Like, what kind of, like, what kind of activity is taking place in this abandoned fucking air raid shelter of a skull? Oh, did I say the wrong number for World War II? Sorry, 1939. War started in 1939. Did I say 13? Sorry, fuck. Anyway. Oh, well. Yeah, this one is especially weak because she's citing Lemkin's definition, which was, in large part, inspired by the Armenian Genocide, which happened in 1915 to 16. Yeah. It's just an article about the Armenian Genocide. All right. A couple of days later, 
She makes the same point in a talk with President Sunday. She's had a minute to sleep on this argument as well. Like she's processed it. That is because uh, out of curiosity, I'm not trying to get a gotcha on you, but yeah. uh, maybe a, a, a meta gotcha on Lonerbox here. But do you sure. know when the term genocide was coined? Oh, I did. Actually, I did. And I looked it up on stream. <laughs> I I've completely lost it. 1944. Thank you. So the word did not even exist to name the phenomena that was going exactly yeah, that yeah. already right. happened four years, you know, at yeah. by Loner Box's own timeline. He believe he says that the genocide began in 1941. That is because All right. she caps off her stream by saying I was completely unprepared and that I downplayed the Holocaust. Yeah, you're gonna go. You're gonna go and tell your chat now that I downplayed the fucking Holocaust, or that I. You yeah, did, that I you stupid idiot! You fucking moron! You did. It's not her fault that you were an idiot. It's not her fault that you fucking suck so much dick at your job that you came on here and fucking blew it. It's not her fault that you came on here completely and utterly unprepared and accidentally did a little a bit of a whoopsie doopsie down Holocaust downplaying. Are you serious, man? It's not fucking her fault, it's yours. You fucked up. You got everything wrong. You did a oopsie doopsie. Own it, man. Fucking own it. I just think it's nice to watch the, uh, the confidence like after we've gone through everything. I don't know, the, the fuck me. This whole thing, this whole video is like, I don't know, watching her like navigate these points and a lot of them you can tell she's just kind of noticed them for the first time and everything like, I don't know. It's like watching a clown running over a minefield. It's just, okay. Let's go back to the presentation. Hmm. Given that Demon Mama has admitted that her understanding of genocide is completely interchangeable with systemic discrimination, any date I gave after 1933 was already bound to be wrong. It would make me wonder, when did she think the genocide of the Jews began? Would it be 1933? Why not earlier? Would she really say you need to wait for concentration camps and a totalitarian regime to call it a genocide? After all, Jews were routinely dehumanized and blamed for Germany's loss in World War I. The German Supreme Court was stacked with anti-Semites and anti-Jewish attacks were not unusual in the Weimar Republic. In the late 1800s, Jewish emancipation in Germany was met with an immediate backlash from anti-Semitic parties, and before then, the Jews were de facto second-class citizens. By Demon Mama's understanding, the genocide of the Jews could have been ongoing from as soon as they started arriving in Europe on Roman slave ships. But of course, when we're engaging with Demon Mama, the common thread is always absurdity. This is because, whoops, this is because she suffers from what we in the industry might describe as the dunk brain. When Demon Mama engages with other creators, she isn't listening to the substance of what they're saying, nor does she have any interest in understanding or fairly characterizing their opinions. The only thing she's listening for is an opportunity to shoehorn people into the worst possible positions. The more cheap dunks and the more accusations of dog whistling, Nazism, genocide denial, Holocaust revisionism, or whatever else, the better. Is she doing this maliciously? Who knows? Personally, I think she does this because her first goal, above everything else, is not to inform her audience, but to entertain them. Honesty, nuance, and charitability are all an inconvenience to her. The result is an incoherent, highly performative clown show riddled with inconsistencies, and flat out false statements. Sorry, my voice went there. Ooh. Honorable mention Smugbug. Smugbug is a small streamer averaging around 40 to 50 viewers who came out of my community after having veganism debates with members of my audience. After getting into a Twitter exchange with Demon Mama, incidentally, in a cursed thread on the topic of trans genocide, she had no hesitation in calling him a Nazi. But why? What was her evidence for this? So, with the word genocide. Oh, wait, Smugbug is the Nazi hat guy? Oh, okay, Smugbug is literally a Nazi. Literally Okay, a Nazi. that makes sense. Smugbug is the Nazi hat guy. I did not realize that. Oh yeah, he's on Team Genocide, that's right. That's what he calls, he, that's what he calls, uh, that's what he calls trans people who think there's a genocide going on. He calls us Team Genocide. Mm -hmm. What's kind of to his credit, even President Sunday, he's not a Nazi, he's an idiot. Wait, no, President Sunday, he literally, his, his avatar literally has it. Okay, sorry, I gotta, I gotta prove this. Hold on. What's that guy's actually name? Hold on. Hold on.
Hold on. I'll get it. Hold on a second. I got to show you this. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, here he is. Okay, here we go. So, here's the guy right here. See? This is this is a Nazi this is the Nazi commandant hat. He covered up the uh the SS symbol with the vegan police, but just so you know, mm. this is the this is the Nazi's hat. Mm. It's not just it's not just a military hat. Watch. Watch, Watch. this. Ready? Okay, I'm going to show you. Hold on, ready? Props, eh? He picked um you can see him there. He picked one and it had the colors. I know what you mean, but it's a vegan thing. He's mocking vegans. Hey. Hats off Sunday. Uh, pun intended. Yeah. It's literally the Nazi one. N every other faction in the world d stopped using these colors because the, with the Nazis did it and nobody wants to be associated with the Nazis. Nobody else uses the black and silver. I'm not kidding you. I don't buy that he's just stupid. Mm. This particular person. I think he's a Nazi. Sorry. Sorry. All right. I don't know if... Um... Like, I feel like if you have to explain it, the, the joke is that people call vegans food Nazis. Like, militant vegan? Uh, okay. Even President Sunday, who has interacted with Smogbug in the past, tried to correct her in chat, but of course, the truth was far less entertaining, and she carried on with the routine anyway. She went one step further and accused Smugbug of trying to hide the fact that it's a Nazi hat by claiming it was from the USSR instead. Thing about it is, is it factually the Nazi one? Yes, it is. Go ahead and look at it. But there's kind of like three different definitions of it. There's the colloquial okay, definition. Just, just the... He tried to say, "Oh, but oh, look, but but Soviet." Look, I'll just show you this. It's super, super simple. Watch. I'll show you. Look. He tried to say it's the Soviet one. But the Soviets used this one. Oh. Theirs was green with gold. Oh. Nobody uses black and silver because oh, the Nazis used black and silver. I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not, like, this is a dog whistle. It's just a, a 101 dog whistle. 101. It, is it, it fact? Even Sunday, where is he? Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Not the start. Uh, all right. I'm not wasting energy defending Smugbug. He held his own for a little bit. But, um, alas, servant Black of the truth no longer. All right. If Smogbug had tried to say it was a Soviet hat, it's not, it's a Nazi hat, that would be pretty dark. That would be a little bit sussy, I admit. If you look at the original thread on Twitter, nowhere does Smogbug make such a claim. This is a screenshot of the thread. The thread's still up as well. Um, they're talking here. Demon Mama chimes in here. Vivian. I appreciate you're really charitable and willing to hear us out rather than dismissing everyone in our side of the discussion as just Nazis or something. Thanks for always looking for the good in us. Your Avi is, I'm very sure, uh, ironically, sporting a literal Nazi commandant hat with one symbol change. I wonder why people might mistake you for a Nazi. It is not a Nazi hat. It is a vegan hat. I am very proud of my beliefs and like to display them prominently. Yeah, totes, bro. What part of this didn't seem real, Demon Mama? So, the Soviet hat was actually brought up by someone else. There's Sansol saying it. That's not Smugbug. They're different people. The thread is still up. You can find it there. What she saw was someone else posting a Soviet hat, which she then attributed to Smugbug to make it look as if he was trying to hide something. As a very wise Twitter user once said, they don't care about the truth. The more ridiculous the claim, the better. It's, a, it's a, from Demon Mama. I don't know if there's a word for this level of projection. I feel like it needs its new term, you know? Um, as one final footnote example of one's brain on dunk, Detective Demon Mama, upon listening to a clip of me talking about President Sunday, completely mishears me referring to a group of Destiny associates and act as if she's exposed me as a Destiny associate myself. With his, like, 
endless mess here. Can we just listen to the beginning of this this uh, little clip again here? Take a close listen to what he says here. Tell me when you hear it. Fucking President come day with his like endless meltdown over every fucking like Destiny associate and then like stalking the guy and shit and like. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? So apparently Loaderbox sees himself as a Destiny associate these days. Those are his words, not mine. I never made that. Well, I said that some of his things sounded a whole lot like a certain person, but those are his words. So I, I just want you to like, you know, keep that in check, huh, okay? Keep yeah, that in mind. Yeah. Um, what did I say? She, this is, she's listening to this for the third time now, right? The beginning of this, this uh, little clip again here. Take a close listen to what he says here. Tell me when you hear it. Fucking president <laughs> come day with okay. his like endless meltdown over every fucking like destiny associate and then like stalking the guy. And I'm referring to the fact that Sunday gets into fights with destiny associates and melts down over them because this clip is me talking about how um, maybe it's a better idea in the future not to think about how people are to me, but how they are to other people, i.e. the destiny associates. Like she's like, how can you be this bad a listener? Uh, okay. By the way, um, I don't think I've really been much of a Destiny associate. Like, I've spoken to him on two panels. One was arguing against him. Um, incidentally, to defend Demon Mama on the Hippy Dippy champion thing. Um, you can see my chat logs in DGG. I've probably spoken there about four or five times. Um, I've always been much more of like a, like I came out of Vosh's community and that's where I spend like, my chat logs there are pretty, pretty long. Um, I, I don't know, like, I have, like, first of all, Detective Demon Mama, I've never hidden the fact that I've been, that I've watched Destiny like on and off since, I don't know, like 2018, something, since like, I think it was the Jordan Pearson fan debate that I first watched. Um, but I might as well say, like, if I ever do end up associating with Destiny more often, and that's like a reason for you to write me off, fuck you. Just, yeah, leave. Cancel your Patreon and go somewhere else, like you strange fucking cultist. Like, whatever. Um, I don't know, like, th the way that the people involved here are, like, when the fucking, whenever the... Whenever the ghost of Dustin enters the room, like they just, it's so strange. Um, and it's going to keep happening as well. Don't worry. But okay. She says this about anyone she doesn't like. I came out of Vosh's community and she called me a DGG or in Destiny Arbiter. Yeah, it's because if you, if you want the lazy way, I get it. Because like lots of audiences are very poisoned against um, Destiny or whatever. So yeah, it's just like a very easy way to write people off without actually engaging with what they're saying. By the way, like, I'm as much of a Destiny viewer as I was, like, last year when Demon Mama was sawing out over my videos taking down Lauren Southern, so, uh, yeah, fuck. Um, I guess, like, you'll believe everything I say uncritically when it's attacking a right-winger, but then as soon as, like, I have a contention with your, like, fucking transgenocide thing, then suddenly it's, like, we, we turn on the dunk brain and all, like, charitability goes away, like, you know, it's weird. I'm gonna try to, like, match the tone of each individual person so be a bit less boisterous for this part president sunday after my first debate with polly and several response videos from various creators one of the responses came from president sunday of all the people who responded to me sunday was the only one i already had some recent contact with i had checked in on him when he was fighting with a bunch of dggers and he seemed to appreciate my concern um, this is just a, Sunday spoke about this DM publicly, so he'll be okay with that. Just, uh, I'm going to be a bit selective cropping DMs for Sunday because Sunday hasn't, he hasn't lied about any of the DMs. So like, I'm not going to show anything he hasn't spoken about. Um, but yeah, I think he actually made a tweet about this, about how, like, m how much this, uh, meant to him at the time. But, uh, even though I think he was completely in the wrong, like still think it's worth you know, treating people like human beings at the end of the day. Um, for some reason, people have been saying I ignored multiple trans YouTubers who reached out to me after the debate.
President Sunday asserts the same here. Like once again, the only reason why I'm even talking about any of this right now, not the only reason why I'm talking about any of this, but the only reason why I'm, I'm being looped into this is because um, in an effort to sideline um, Demon Mama Doe and other people like that, uh, Loner Box came to me. This is simply not true. Doe reached out to me before I ever spoke to Sunday. We spoke in DMs and I offered to talk over voice chat, although it didn't seem especially enthusiastic about that. This is um, Doe's messages uh, from October 25th, uh, just a couple of, one or two days after the debate. You serious with this transgenocide debate? Is this just DGG stupidity? I've been hearing this and he's here again. Going around talking about words like Nazi or genocide don't have meanings anymore. I'm legit disappointed I thought so much better of you. Um, and I offered to speak to Doe about this. Um, I do appreciate you coming to me in private, though. If it's something you think could be talked through in a private voice call, I'd be more than happy to, but no pressure. Um, I'd be willing to sit with you and rewatch that entire conversation with you, privately or not, if you really want. We can go over every single point if you really want. I'm going to take this as a no. I'm autistic, but I, I think this kind of suggests I'm not really up for it, but okay. Demon Mama has said nothing to me. If you want to know why I didn't reach out to her, just watch any debate she's had on her channel. Ever had on her channel, sorry. Um, I did notice eventually when I got around to viewing her entire response, she did challenge me to a debate, but again, like, I don't know why she assumed I was going to watch that whole thing, like, immediately, but okay. Um, a non-binary trans person from Vosh's community reached out to me and we spoke about setting up a call on stream. The conversation ended with this message from me and they didn't respond. I'm not going to out this person because, but, you know, just this was the last message I sent to them. They didn't reply. So if they want to challenge that, they can go ahead. A trans video essayist reached out to me after criticizing me in one of her videos. The conversation was short, but very cordial. We exchanged some kind words and the conversation ended. Um, yeah, this person again, I'm not going to, you know, put you on the spot or whatever. Um, fine. President Sunday was not roped into this conversation. I only offered to talk to him after he made a five hour mega analysis of my debate with poly people. He had also appeared in my chat at least once when I was discussing the topic. And in any case, I thought I'd get a more productive conversation out of him than I would from Demon Mama. It's actually five hours. It just looks like eight on the thing. This thumbnail is very funny. Well done. Um, I'm not joking. It's funny. All right. uh, <clears throat> when Sunday and I were still figuring out a date for our talk, Polly had unexpectedly appeared in my chat asking me for a second conversation on November 1st. Because I was fairly satisfied with this talk, I started to feel like the drama was winding down. I agreed, with, I agreed to talk with Sunday on November 7th, but I was admittedly looking forward to moving on to something else. Doe had stopped responding to me on October 30th, but it already felt like the conversation wasn't going anywhere. I'll bring this up later. Right? Just to give you the date, though. This was when Doe stopped responding to me. We were both exchanging big, long messages like this, but yeah, this was the last before... Um, for at least, like, a, a week or two. All right. Three days before the talk, I indicated that I was leaning towards putting the whole thing to bed. That I would still talk if he wanted to, but wasn't especially fussed about it. To be honest, I'm leaning towards putting the whole thing to bed now. If you really want to talk, we can do Sunday or Monday, but yeah, I'm not especially fussed about it now. Uh, this is November 4th. Three days before the... Yeah, yeah. On November 5th, I noticed that Sunday had scheduled his stream on YouTube with the title, Is There a Trans Genocide? This was the thumbnail at the time. Yeah. When I asked if we could change the topic to focus a little closer on the key disagreement, he declined. I think we should change the title, though. What is a genocide? It seems more apt, since that's where the disagreement comes from. It's actually not. You'll see when we chat and I lay out my case. A little bit ambiguous, but okay. At some point, whether it was before or after this, I can't say, President Sunday had five people doing research for him behind the scenes. This is something he never told me about until he slightly alluded to it on the evening before our talk. The only indication I get of this is here. Why is the 
thing not centering like it was. Fuck you, chat. Go away. Three major issues I'm going to bring up in sequence. Um, here, this was the one indication. We're beginning a day-long research and prep stream to make sure we do it well. Have a lot of people working to make sure I'm as informed and measured as possible, so this should be interesting. Now, I thought he was referring to he's going to do his research stream and people are going to help him while he's doing research. That's all I, that's all I got from that. But okay. Until that point, all I knew was that he had one research stream planned the day before on November 6th, starting at 9 p.m. my time. The day before our conversation, I was watching his review of my debate with Poly People, and I came across this clip, which I found a little puzzling. Because he's not taking account of the actual consequences of his decisions in this conversation. See, if he chooses simply to not engage in this argument and just goes, okay, guys, look, I don't, I don't agree with the language of genocide here. And I don't agree with the language of genocide here either, by the way. Um, I think the term is hopelessly fraught, and I think it, it tends specifically to debates like this that are... It was weird hearing that after he put up a debate topic of is there a trans genocide, but... Um, only uh, obscuring of what's actually at stake. I think the term itself has too much evocations of, of the conditions that brought about its initial use. I think we need uh, a, more, a more general and more specific term that encompasses things like general... Uh, systemic group annihilation attempts right um but given that this is this is the situation we arrive with th this is the situation we were born into as it is um and given that this term is already in use uh the use of this term and its situation in, in our social imaginary and how Monaka, you're right we do use democide for that yeah you're right how we how we talk about these things um that now becomes itself like a, a a political entity with real weight and if something has been identified as a genocide by one party and another party successfully uh, uh counters that no this is not actually a genocide the response from outside by the wider world is to downplay its significance and to turn away to things that are more serious with the result that this thing is now better allowed to press forward and to advance to a worse state there's something about the way he's talking about political weight here, um, even though the genocide argument is like, it, it's, I don't, I have never seen that much evidence of it outside of Twitter, or like this very tight left wing space. Um, I don't know if I completely disagree with what he's saying there. That's kind of why I was leaning more towards just like leaving this conversation alone, but. Yeah. So. I think this was a profoundly juvenile display by someone I otherwise generally respect. It's extremely disappointing. My hope, my hope Ooh. is that he can at the very least, what even is it? My hope is that at the very least he can get out of his head long enough um to recognize that uh regardless of what he thinks about the matter um he's talking to a category of people that are actually fighting for their existence in a country not his own in a context he doesn't fully understand um and that how you comport yourself with respect to these different actors has real consequences and uh sometimes it's I will say the fact that he's saying this in reference to one discussion I had with poly people of all people uh, for reasons we'll find out later. That's kind of funny. The best thing to do is nothing. Hmm. <sighs> Ooh, dramatic sigh. Um, I just thought from hearing that get out of my head, um, I don't know, acknowledge it felt like the only thing that people wanted from this conversation with um, Sunday was for me to like flip on something. Maybe not the genocide thing, but to like, I don't know, acknowledge my horrible behavior with Polly, which we've already gone over, just something like that. Like, I just have no idea. It was just really, yeah. On top of this, he still hadn't said exactly what we'd be talking about. And besides saying, you'll see when we chat. At that point, I had been flicking through some of the response videos people had made about me, and most of them just seemed like reiterations of Demon Mama's points. 
Nearly all of them seemed like they were just looking for an apology for me. From me, sorry. I had no intention of doing this, and I didn't see how an hour of me sticking to my guns with Sunday would have helped anything move forward. From my end, it felt like the whole thing was settled, especially after my second conversation with Polly. That's the other thing as well. Lots of people were talking about how um, the main thing, Doe said this as well, uh, that the big problem was my conduct with Polly, but I thought, what's the point in having that discussion? Because I've already spoken to Polly. If, that, if it's between me and Polly, we had a second conversation and it was chill. And that, as far as I know, that's the last I've heard from her. So it just seemed weird that these guys were trying to like insert themselves into that whole thing. But yeah. After seeing Sunday lay out the conversation topics, realizing this was never going to be a productive conversation and having other real life things to attend to, I decided to cancel. I made sure to let him know before he started his research stream as I didn't want to waste his time. So he lists the topics. Um, first, about the definition and use of the term genocide generally, whether it's useful, fraught, limited in application, etc. Considering some problems with arguing that trans people are targets of genital actions, arguing the contrary. Third, hopefully much more cooled down conversation about engagement on these questions given present circumstance. Um, I don't know if this is a reference to the poly conversation, but I don't know. Uh, and then that's when I sat on it for you know, like 20 minutes. This is the beginning. This, his research stream before the uh, 7th was starting at 9. So try to make sure to just get it like bang on there before he starts doing research. Sorry, not interested anymore. Nothing personal or anything. I just have a million other things I'd rather do right now. Was this the best way to let him know? No. It was a decision I should have made earlier, and I definitely could have worded it better. If he had asked me to elaborate, I would have. But instead of replying, he said this. There are three issues I'm going to bring up in sequence. It shouldn't take a tremendous amount of time, and my goal in this is to help build some bridges so you can have a more positive relationship with the community on this issue, not bully you into being turned on any... He's just reading the DMs here. ...problems with worded. arguing that... And then he just replied just like two minutes ago. Yeah, sorry, I'm not interested anymore. Nothing personal or anything. I just have a million other things I'd rather do right now. Unbelievable. That's actually unbelievable. Yeah, sorry, I'm not interested anymore. You laughed in the face of your last interlocutor on this issue. That's actually unreal. That's actually disgraceful. Well, that's fine. I wasn't really depending on him having the conversation anyways. That just kind mm -hmm. of expedites things, actually. Oh. It just expedites them in a really disappointing way. I had some respect for the guy. That's actually really pathetic. I just want to say, imagine... I had some respect for the, what, until that DM, to like cancel the conversation. Like, I don't know if I could fathom being so entitled that me canceling a conversation with you warrants that flip. That, that's just like, and the, what, that it expedites things as if what, like you were, you already felt like I was going to be fucking written off anyway. I don't know. Like, but, you know, it was almost worth doing it in that way because, you know, that's kind of that level of like maybe slightly rude way of pulling out of the conversation. And that's all it takes to show me like who you really are. Well, cool. Um, he then went on to, to spend the next few days tweeting about me at one point, even claiming I was ready to throw my trans viewers under the bus at the drop of a hat for the sake of my ego. He tweeted a lot of these. This is me on transgenocide, apparently. Well, that sounds kind of boring. Okay. Um, I was ready to throw my trans... This, is, this tweet is insane. 
at this point, it's basically clear that Lonerbox is ready to throw his trans viewers under the bus at the drop of a hat for the sake of his ego. It's honestly just sad. Everyone who worked on addressing him on this issue had respect for him until he showed how insincere he was. Bearing in mind, this is after he's seen the second conversation with Polly, where we agree to disagree, have a polite conversation. She doesn't accuse me of being cruel to her or TOS baiting or any of that. That's someone else's accusation. And we just go our separate ways. But because you want to be part of it, and I don't let you, or I change my mind about it. That means I'm going to throw my trans viewers under the bus. There are trans people in this chat right now, right? This guy is speaking for you right now. Like, what the fuck? Okay. However, after hearing about how much work and how many workers he had devoted, uh, sorry, he had devoted to researching for this topic, I was curious to see what arguments he had come up with. Here are some of my impressions. I'm not sure why, but he seems to think I ignored or misunderstood Lemkin's original definition of genocide, even though he sees me allude to it several times in the second debate with Polly. This claim comes up quite a lot, like I'm almost 100% sure it came from Sunday. I couldn't find the exact clip, but people who were watching his streams saying like, yeah, I misremembered or misconstrued uh, Lemkin's definition um, and reasoning as to his formulation to the definition of genocide in the first and second poly people debate shows I haven't researched the topic well. I think he said it in the research stream, but it's weird that he would accuse me of that because I allude to Lemkin's definition like several times in this debate with Polly, and he's watching me do it. Because, okay. um, the, but I think the reason for it being narrow is because the word genocide was literally coined to describe a crime without a name. Sure. Uh, specifically the Holocaust, also the Armenian Genocide, which is why not so much in... So Holocaust and Armenian Genocide, that's Lemkin. I have yeah. problems with the way it's used in law, like a, quite a lot of problems. Cultural mm -hmm. Genocide is just not recognized in law, which is a huge problem because the Uyghurs in China, yeah. Canadian residential schools. I think um, the point of... So it's like, I'm, I've, been, I've referred to Lemkin's definition since like since the beginning of this thing, but... Um, so that'd be weird but yeah. um yeah like i think the only reason political category isn't in that definition is because stalin didn't want it to go there again political affiliation it was in lemkin's definition it was taken out by the un so funny that i wouldn't know that if i didn't know about lemkin yeah so, well sure um, sure i mean i, I mean, wonder why but um when you have a bunch of genocide yeah. doers making the rules it's gonna so that'd be I think the problem is that they think Lemkin is like a big own because apparently Lemkin's definition does allow for the situation in America to be a genocide, even though it kind of doesn't, but yeah, right. At one point, he tries to make the case for cultural genocide by comparing today's... Sorry, just another thing of this. I don't know if the next time I debate something, I just need to like actually say, oh, by the way, Lemkin coined the term and then hear his contribution. Like, just, I don't know. At one point, he tries to make the case for cultural genocide by comparing today's situation to the treatment of indigenous children in the United States and Canada, describing it as exact corollaries. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of cultural genocide with the case of trans people, we actually do have uh, exact corollaries to the um, case of indigenous children in uh, Canada and the United States. Um, the forced transfer of children from one group to another. Uh, children in some states have been removed from their parents' homes because they have been allowed to transition early on. Now, this is something you're going to notice a lot. Um, once you go in to this topic, trying to prove there's a genocide, you're probably going to read a few stories in the press and misconstrue them if your goal is to put them under the definition of genocide. As far as I know, I could be wrong. I don't think any kids have been taken away from their parents because they allowed their kids to transition. What happened in Texas, the directive I mentioned already at the beginning of this, is that he issued a directive saying that if parents allowed kids to transition, they would be put under investigation for child abuse. They weren't able to make it child abuse just to let your kid transition. I think the, I don't know, like, I don't know if Greg Abbott was just hoping that he would um, investigate the parents of a trans kid and find out that the parents had been like forcing this reluctant kid to take hormones because they're like a liberal groomer or whatever. I have no idea. But as far as I know with that story, nine families were 
put under investigation. I think a couple of them had meetings, like one meeting with an investigator, and then the investigations were blocked by a federal judge. As far as I know, I don't think any kids have been taken away just because their parents were allowing them to transition. But the problem again is like, and you know, he can make mistakes like that when he's talking to someone like me because I'm a pretty left-wing person, pretty left-wing audience. Um, challenging that optically always looks like I'm doing the downplaying thing. But like, if you took that to someone who was, who was on the fence and tried to say that there was an equivalent of an indigenous cultural genocide happening in Texas, like you've lost them because that hasn't happened yet. Like, now you can say a lot about the fact that they're trying to, and it's fucking obscene that they're trying to, but there's a, when you, when you notice that there are all these like institutional barriers in the way, um, I don't know, like if the situation is bad enough as it is, you don't actually need to like lie about it. You don't need to do that. Throughout his research stream, President Sunday repeatedly brings up a story from Florida where the medical board voted to start drafting a rule that would ban puberty blockers, HRT, and surgeries for trans youths under 18. This is just a story about the bill. Everything about this hearing was reprehensible. Their expert testimony was riddled with bunk science and was delivered by people who had no background in trans-related research. Sabercat, is that... Um, an example of a kid who has been taken? I've I think I've read that article. Oh, sorry. We'll come back to it. Again, I've, I could be wrong, and that would change things if it were the case. Um, everything about this hearing was reprehensible. Their expert testimony was riddled with bunk science and was delivered from people who had no background in trans-related research. One of them was a dentist. When they began the public comment section, eight of the first nine speakers were detransitioners, and only one had received gender-affirming care as a child. Only one person, one trans person was allowed to testify, and the hearing ended 45 minutes early. But for Sunday, this story also contained evidence that the people in the hearing were acting with genocidal intent. His evidence here is a paragraph which mentions protesters chanting the words, the blood is on your hands, to which a board member responds with, that's okay. This is him reading the article. At one point, an audience member Whoa. yelled that trans youth Sorry, loud. that trans youths would suffer if the board voted to bar care. The blood is on your hands, quote unquote. To which Zachariah responded, "That's okay." Is this recorded? So is this is there a video recording of this? That's an insane statement. That's okay? Like, not even arguing the point, just saying that's okay. Uh, Loner Box, if you're watching this, this is a statement by a medical board. They're being told their policies will result in deaths, that the blood will be on their hands. The retort is not to say, no, the blood will not be on our hands. These are multifaceted. Uh, the causes of these deaths are multifaceted. And we can address these by other means in these surgeries, yada, yada, or some other bullshit. No, he flat out just says, no, that's okay. There are ways to bullshit this easily for a, a disinterested audience that would fly. Zachariah doesn't do this. The board member doesn't do this. He says... After cutting the public comment period short, 45 minutes left, he only allows one more person to testify. Someone in the audience says the blood is on your hands. Trans youths would suffer, and Zachariah responds with, that's okay. Lonerbox, that's an admittance. Hmm. At one point, an audience member yelled that Trent... I think people in chat are already starting to figure out the problem here, but he refers back to this quote several times throughout the stream and even uses it in response to hearing me talk about being able to infer genocidal intent from Hitler. So here's just a few... There... This is a matter of record now. Once again, <clears throat> Florida Medical Board, 
votes to ban gender affirming care. At one point, an audience member member uh, yells that trans youths would suffer if the board voted to bar care. Quote, the blood is on your hands, unquote. To which Zachariah, a board member, responded, quote, that's okay, unquote. Okay. Um... Whether the propaganda statements I cite, uh, quote, the perpetuation of the race of Aborigines is not to be desired, unquote, should weigh as intent may be hard to judge. I give weight to the actions that were excused by the words. Some redefinitions of genocide, see Fine and Gigliotti, have made persistence in a destructive course equivalent to intent to destroy. And I agree with this. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this case of the Florida Medical Board, when a medical board member is told, the blood is on your hands, people will die from this. When he says that's okay, he has been made aware. Mm. He has been made absolutely aware of the consequences of the policies that these people are pursuing. And he's owning it. So... <sighs> Again, like, the reason I have such an issue with people bringing up, like, trying to do the genocide is, like, they keep on trying to draw corollaries like this that just have no... He's talking When he's talking about persistence in a destructive course, he's talking about the treatment of indigenous people in Australia where the state was committing massacres and also dragging kids to state reserves to force them to learn a different language in order to give them to white families, often as laborers. But, yeah. Um, also, I don't know if a crowd chanting at you is you being made aware. Um, we'll get to that. Even when I talk about impossible to do, Hitler. like, if someone wanted to say that Hitler sounds like a genocidal guy, you could have said that from, like, 1919 sure because he was already saying germany will be better once every jew is removed and yeah. i'm like okay well, well he wanted to remove no all the jews from this europe without, right i mean he was yeah. pretty open about yeah, that yeah 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 there, there's no way you're doing this without killing people in the end right like right. you can try all your madagascar plans or whatever the fuck they tried all, all the way up until 1940 but the inevitable conclusions like we know now like it's always the same okay you have board members in florida medical board members responding to there will be blood on your hands with that's okay They've been made abundantly, it's been made abundantly clear. People will die from this. We have the statistics. We know what the medication, what the treatments that are on offer right now, where they are on offer. We know what they do. We know they save lives. Taking those out of the equation, once we already know they save lives, that is killing those people. They know this. They are fine with it. 41% jokes abound. Did he actually? Hmm. Never mind. For reference, here is the clip of what apparently constitutes genocidal intent. Did he say board members, even though it was only one? Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. This is the hearing where the that's okay thing happened. I want to, before you, uh, you can come to the podium, you'll be the last speaker for the day. And wow. let me, let me, let me finish. Let me, fi let me finish. Let me finish. Don't shout. You're not going to win. Let me finish. What we're going to do, we'll give you an email for the state of Florida. Wow. You, you, you send your information, and whatever information that you, what information you send will be a part of the record. You know what? Okay, okay. You know what? You know what? Let's, okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, Miss Patty Sullivan, you may proceed. You may proceed. That's okay. That's okay. Let's have some uh, decency and quorum here. Uh, uh, Patty Sullivan, you may proceed. So, just to be clear, this guy is an enormous piece of shit. This whole hearing is completely, like, fucked. But if you're hearing that and you think that's him saying, ah, I have now been made aware that my policies will kill people, but actually that's cool. Like, if you think this is your genocidal intent, I mean, and I think, that's the, I think that's the worst thing as well, is that you've got an event that is so unambiguously wrong in every single way, but because you're trying to prove that it's a genocide, you have to go that one step further and say that you've got like a bloodthirsty legislator acting with genocidal intent because he said that's okay, the people are dying. First of all, it's not untoward for Republicans to be bad with science, right? Like, 
Republicans were made aware, made aware plenty of times about their COVID policies that got people killed. That doesn't mean Republicans got like were committing genocide against themselves, even though they were made aware plenty of times that their policies were killing people. Um, but Sunday is challenged by one of his chatters on the framing of this clip, and he responds to say that not only does he not know, but that he also doesn't care. Uh, without any specialist training, so that the actual experts were drowned out. And then afterwards, in response to people calling out... Um, yeah, th that's okay is probably just like, that's okay, move on, like, calm down. Yeah, it's just him trying to move the session on, yeah. Which again... It's not like, like the guy is pretty disgusting, but uh, you're, it's, it's that thing, same thing again as well. Like if you try to present that argument to someone who isn't already on your side, you're going to look like you're fucking insane. But yeah. Their blood is on your hands. He says, that's fine. If he was saying that's fine to somebody else, by all means, I, I would, I would love to see some record of somebody saying something like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. I don't care if he didn't mean full-bloodedly, yeah, I'm fine with having that blood in our hands. I don't even care if he was responding to that person. Now, you would care if you were trying to prove genocidal intent, but Giga Chat. Because the fact of the matter is he, d he would have their blood on their hands, on his hands. The board would have their blood on their hands. Um, so they can speak with their actions, and they can show that they're not fine with it. Otherwise, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> Oh no, are we not are we not being cosmically charitable uh to the in in the case of Zachariah, quite probably criminal, but he wasn't caught for it. Um to this this board stacked with liars and sociopaths, uh predating on the bigotry of, of the popular culture, uh lying about um the state of, of medical research on this issue to the end of killing a whole bunch of people for cheap political points. My heart bleeds purple porpoise pus. Yeah. After admitting that he hasn't seen the clip and that he doesn't care whether or not it proves the thing he's saying it does, he goes on to use this point in a debate with Sonsol anyway. The way he rephrases what he read in the article is especially telling. Sonsol. We have the Florida Medical Board saying that they are okay. It's, it's, it's perfectly okay that as a result of their decisions, trans youths will die. Sansal. Is that what they said? You know when people accuse each other in this space of being bad faith? This is like when every fiber of your being is bad faith, but. <laughs> this bit properly fucked my head. Oh God, all right. Um, he also seems to be a little confused about how medical transition works. He seems to believe that the process of full medical transition is evidence of genocide, because it renders the patient infertile. Now, I've put full medical transition in quotation marks here because um, it's not the most politically correct term. Uh, it implies like people who only get top surgery are like incomplete or some shit, but yeah, um, I'll just go with what he was saying here. D, imposing measures to prevent births within the group. This one's a little less known. Once again, it is a condition of many trans uh, transition treatments that you are sterilized in the process. E. So when he's saying trans treatments there it's a condition of Deep. many trans treatments that you're sterilized in the process like when i first heard that like yeah bottom surgery makes you infertile i think for trans women hrt makes you infertile as well or not no not completely it just it just it's got a chance of reducing fertility i think for trans men it's a little bit less so the case but um i think I think what he's referring to here is um, gender recognition laws, where they say that, like in Sweden until 2012, as an example, or lots of parts of Europe, actually, where you couldn't get legal gender recognition unless you got 
quote unquote top well top and bottom surgery. You had to get all the surgeries to get legal gender recognition. So I don't know if that's what he's referring to. Uh, I, I've tried looking at a few of the older policies as well. I think in America, it's 17 states still do that, where you need to get the uh, top and bottom surgery to get um, gender recognition, which incidentally does sterilize you. Um, uh, I think in Sweden, it's really hard to tell because when you the way that a lot of the articles on it are written, um, some of them for Sweden from the 70s says that uh, it was the case that you had to get sterilized before any surgery. So like you had to get sterilized just even if you want top surgery, which, but then other articles just said it was a, as a gender recognition thing. Like, and I think sometimes what happens is when you get bottom surgery, they would have a box that says you have to consent to being sterilized because the procedure of bottom surgery will sterilize you. Like, so I don't know if he's confused transition with um, like transition treatments with gender recognition, but incidentally, it's a mistake that he makes more than once. It is still the case in many places that a condition of even fully transitioning medically requires a trans person, because of holdovers from the history of eugenics, to sterilize themselves so they can't reproduce their genes into the general population. So what did he say there? That a condition of even fully transitioning medically. A condition of fully transitioning medically. How can you, is there a way you can fully transition medically, quotation mark, without being rendered infertile? Like if you're a trans woman and you get bottom surgery, they cut your balls off. Like, sorry for being blunt, but if you're a trans man, uh, there are like, there are multiple bottom surgery processes. I don't think you, one of them that's, one of them is like hysterectomy. I don't know if that's necessary though. Um, you, I don't know, I don't know if uh, like um, phalloplasties or any, are they, are they render you infertile but like this is usually like this even in the gender recognition places this is like informed consent and i think what the european union did was that they banned the gender recognition stuff um in 2017 because they called it a human rights violation which it is of course you shouldn't need bomb surgery to get your recognition that's insane but calling it like eugenics and not letting them reproduce their genes like what I want to know is, and I couldn't find this anywhere, is if there's any states where they don't let you freeze your sperm and eggs beforehand, sperm or eggs, but he's saying full medical transition. He does it more than once as well. Like, this has been calculated. D, imposing measures to prevent births within the group. It is still policy all, in, in very many places that you must be sterilized as a part of your transition process. And he said it previously in his research stream. Trans medicine has uh, evolved over the last few decades, um, has been unreflectively taking on elements of um, previous eugenic uh, treatment of trans people. So until very recently, in most places, there was a requirement that you have your transition, um, you have your uh, transition procedures, I guess, done in a specific order that basically required you to sterilize yourself in order to fully transition which is wrong, obviously. Again, in order to fully medically transition, which implies bottom surgery, to fully transition. How do you do that without making someone infertile? Like, I know in the past you can refer to things like, I, I think that Sweden law was, but he's also flipping between whether it's still happening now, especially in the United States, or if it was the case in the past, which again, wouldn't be the... Like, if you want to make a case for transgender in the past, it's quite easy. Like. Um, when you were trans, like in the 30s and 40s, they just lobotomized you in a lot of parts of America. So that's, that's pretty clear, but like, I have no fucking idea what he's talking about here. And he had five people doing research for him here as well. And not to take anything away from them, maybe they did good work and all that, but like, I don't know if their information seems to have gone uh, through like the President's Sunday filter and he's just read articles about, or read headlines about the... Uh, the uh, legal gender recognition and he's rearranged that in his head to make it into bottom surgery would be genocide or eugenics like like i don't know like he could have like fucking contra points whispering things in his ear and it would still come out as like horseshit i don't it's i think the way you'd word that is that there are some states where they still 
very inhumanely demand you to get bottom surgery in order to uh like top and bottom surgery in order to get gender recognition like and that's a big problem but again like because we're on the genocide road we have to like fucking exaggerate we have to like change everything you know um doe the day after demon mama's review doe reached out to me in dms to ask me about the debate the conversation was a little heated at times but i wouldn't say hostile I offered to talk about it privately over voice chat, but it didn't seem interested. This is just the bit again with the uh, talk. Um, you really want? Probably not. Okay. Um, we went back and forth a little, but it didn't feel like things were going anywhere. Um, the reason I tend to ask people for voice calls, even if it's in private, is because text message exchanges, especially for arguments, um, really mess with my head, especially when they go like this. Sorry, chat, go away. Um, when you bring up the word genocide, you are intrinsically bringing up violence, by the way. Unless you think this is the first genocide in history that we can just vote and protest away. When I bring up the word law, I'm intrinsically bringing up violence. When I bring up the word vote, I'm intrinsically bringing up violence. When I bring up the word president, I'm intrinsically bringing up violence. When I bring up the word oppression, I'm intrinsically bringing up violence. Do you really think that's comparable to genocide? Uh, no, you don't. Stop. Stop. Nice spelling. Like, I can't, I can't engage. Like, so... I find it really strange that someone like Doe, who is kind of known to be like the big left-wing theory head, would ignore the difference between systemic violence and direct violence. Like, obviously the violence with genocide is like, that's like Jewish partisan groups destroying Nazi supply lines, killing, killing officers, killing soldiers, so they can allow people to escape. That's not really quite the same violence as like this stuff. I, but yeah, like I don't I don't really have the energy to go through the back and forth with this. After a few days of exchanging messages, long and short, I sent a few paragraphs summarizing my thoughts on the whole situation. Doe did not respond. So this was the last message I sent before the big falling out. Um Looks like I was right. I even said immediately after the liberal thing was more of a jet. This is just talking about a response I made to Demon Mama on stream earlier on. Anyway, um, having watched everything back and some of Demon Mama's response, I have no idea how you could frame this as a scared trans person just sharing her concerns. She's a debater who has no problem going on panels with Christian fascists, and she, she, well done, Lorna Box, came into my chat looking to argue. The problem is that even when I agreed with her on everything regarding the policies and what to do about them, uh, she still said I was part of the problem for not calling it a genocide. Genocide which, according to whatever homespun definition you guys are using, would apparently include every kind of systemic discrimination in human history. Strange way to use a word that was literally coined to describe the very worst of all crimes, but meh. I noticed you were doing the same thing by pulling parts out of the UN definition, which I find odd because we both know that isn't how language works. A word's meaning comes from its use and practice as well as its definition, and ignoring that second half is pretty dishonest, especially with a word that is used so sparingly, not just in law, but also in history. Polly went out of that talk laughing with her chat for over an hour about how I was doing Holocaust revisionism and genocide denial. I can find you the clip if you want, but did none of you notice that I was actually trying to back up her point by saying what I did about 1941? The idea that the Nazis' original and explicit intent was to remove Jews, ethnic cleansing would be a better term there, and the inevitable conclusion of that was mass killing, the thing 99% of people think when they hear genocide, is hardly controversial and I can give you plenty of sources if you think there's a problem with it. I was trying to agree with her that intent can be inferred and intervention can be perfectly justified before genocide occurs, but she was so dunk-brained that she just couldn't see it. You can see at the end when I said intervention was justified as soon as Dachau opened in 33 and she refused to acknowledge it. I know I'm writing a lot here because I do see you as a generally honest person, but I have DM, Demon Mama, Agreeing with a chatter who said I was acting like a Holocaust denier, Polly refusing to ban or even time out one of her chatters for telling me to kill myself, and a bunch of people in DMs sending me Nazi Germany 101 videos because apparently I didn't know Hitler was in fact very bad. Okay, that one is kind of funny. I don't know what to say, I just think this characterization is insanely unfair and I feel like I've been gaslit to fuck over the last week. I have to put it to rest for a bit because of deadlines, but yeah, guess I'm just disappointed. Um, this thing here about her chat, ba the banning thing. Uh, when I went into Polly's chat after the debate, she was 
doing the thing, was he right about the Holocaust? I said I could explain that take in like 30 seconds, just send her some sources. And someone in her chat said, um, I can think of something else you can do in 30 seconds, Loner Box. Um, I thought, like, she said, Polly insisted to me that that uh, 30 seconds was actually a um, premature ejaculation joke. Um, but personally, if my community made sexually degrading jokes to uh, someone like to Polly, I'd probably say, don't do that, but it's okay. I'm, I'm not really that offended. I just thought it was like a bit wild. Um, I wouldn't hear from Doe again until after I pulled out of my talk with President Sunday. When the day had passed, it started messaging me again, and within 13 minutes, uh, 15 minutes of talking, I decided to block it. A week later, Doe put out a 13-tweet post about me on Twitter. This thread is probably one of the most dishonest characterizations I've ever received in my life. Let's look at it. So keep some of this in mind and we'll go through problems. I came to LearnerBox privately more than once, frustrated after watching him publicly try to bait a trans woman into talking about her oppression into a TOS violation, asking which Republicans you want to kill because she felt genocidal was accurate to describe Republican policy. Um, pay attention to the things that are put in quotation marks here. Um, he claimed that I and others were just trying to force him to accept the word genocidal, that we were a small group of radicals who had invented a new definition, separate from the UN definition academics use, just to claim that we're experiencing the worst possible oppression. I explained that I didn't care whether or not he had a particular line for when he thought the descriptive rhetoric of genocidal should come into play, that what bothered most people was the way he treated Polly, and the way it encourages other people to treat us. So, again, the way I treated Polly, that complaint never came from Polly. It was settled. I, just, just, yeah, I want that to stay in. Yeah. We didn't come to any sort of resolution at that time. Later, I heard from President Sunday that Lonerbox had reached out to him for a conversation about the discourse generated about the Polly people conversation. President Sunday wanted to do it right and come well researched. This had made me hopeful, and I, along with others, were happy to dedicate time to research that, that was going to be used to help two political commentators I respect develop their opinions and, eval and elevate the discourse in general. I was also hopeful that President Sunday could get Lornerbox to acknowledge what had bothered people about the way he had handled things since that conversation with Polly. Again, this isn't on Sunday's list of topics. Really. After many people had dedicated hours of research and President Sunday was about to start his final research stream before the scheduled conversation between him and Lornerbox, Lornerbox decided that the topic was, quote, again, quote, too boring and he didn't want to have it anymore. President Sunday had his research stream anyways. We weren't done with the topic that we had dedicated hours to researching, one in which many of those involved in the researchers' rights and freedoms were at stake. He also left the door open for Lonerbox on their scheduled date. After hoping that Lonerbox would show up despite cancelling on President Sunday, I reached out back to him, frustrated again, watching other people mimic his behaviour towards other trans people speaking about their oppression. While we're going through the rest of this, I want you guys to imagine in your head what reaching out back to me frustrated again would have looked like um just give a just guess what that would have looked like right. his response was to block me saying with friends like these after he claimed i wasn't listening i respected learner box which is why i was appalled at his behavior and thought that coming to him privately would help him see that i wasn't out to harm him that i respected him and wanted him to do better and it's why i thought that coming with arms full of research would show that we were coming to share in learning and knowledge together Unfortunately, that seems not to be the case, considering his behavior towards those that dedicated time to honestly exploring a topic that is very close to their lives. Um, all we wanted was him to approach the topic honestly since he reached out for the conversation. Okay. Go through some points on that. Doe claims I publicly tried to bait a, t a trans woman into a TOS violation asking which Republicans you want to kill. I have no idea why this question is in quotation marks because I never asked it. If what I was doing was so clearly TOS baiting, if you were so sure of my intentions and of the fact that I would have broken my entire pattern of behavior on this platform just to get a small trans streamer banned from Twitch, why would you not at least use a direct quote? I don't know if it rejects my claim that people are trying to force the word genocide upon people, 
But I think, at the very least, it's fair to say there is some pressure. Well, you've seen the poly conversations, and... Um, Republicans have spent the last two days excusing and even congratulating a mass murderer because his victims were queer. If you claim to be a leftist and still think calling this a genocide is too strong a word, I have news for you. You are not a leftist, nor are you a trans ally. Yup. It's time we collectively put our foot down. The conservatives have drawn the battle lines. You're either willing to acknowledge the truth, or you're giving space for conservatives to fuel a genocide. I find it strange that Doe claimed not to care about my opinions on the word genocide if it then agreed to do research for Sunday on that particular topic. If Doe was more bothered by the way I treated Polly and was hopeful that Sunday could get me to acknowledge what had bothered people about the way I handled things, why was this not specified on Sunday's list of topics? If we were going to talk about the debate, it surely would have made sense to tell me that I could at least watch it to grab timestamps. Watch it again. Sorry. In Doe's thread, it says I cancelled the conversation with Sunday because it was too boring. Again, I don't know why boring is in quotation marks, because I never said this. To be clear, no one asked me to specify why I cancelled the talk. Sunday absolutely didn't, and as we're about to find out, neither did Doe. After I decided not to show up to the debate, Doe says it reached out to me frustrated again, watching other people mimic my behaviour towards other trans people speaking about their oppression. My response was to block it, saying, with friends like these, after I claimed it wasn't listening. At the very least, the words in quotation marks are correct here. However, the reason I chose to block Doe could use some clarification. So, Doe comes into my DMs about a week after this, we've already read this, doesn't engage with any of this, posts a tweet from Sonsol, if you actually think this is my position, you're fucking insane. You're listing off shit that hasn't happened yet or has been directly struck down in court as evidence of a genocide now. You're acting like your name is engraved at the Trollocaust Museum already. Here is the direct consequence of your behavior. Same tweet again. If you're speedrunning using every rhetorical strategy to make people stop listening to trans individuals talk about actual harm being done to them, to call you dangerous to trans people is an understatement and it's certainly not a lie. Good job promoting discarding and laughing at trans people who are worried about their oppression. You're an excellent advocate. You've done an incredible job of encouraging the people around you to disregard and disrespect trans people and paternalistically mock them and tell them they're bad for their own movement. Question mark. I had a second convo with Polly and it seemed pretty chill. I think what you did best though was convince people that utilizing state policies to eliminate people isn't a genocide, when politicians just do it because they're worried about kids. You just did an amazing job setting up the obvious dichotomy between the violent, crazy trans people who are using words like genocide to encourage their audience to commit violent actions and the good-natured, good-hearted conservatives who care about kids. The effects of your work is clear and the company you keep shines through you. The only reason I didn't continue the discussion before was because you were going to talk to President Sunday and I thought he could do a better job of getting you to stop being a dumb fucking idiot than I could. But you pussied out of that too. Can you address the fact that I spoke to Polly for a second time and I said I didn't think this was the issue worth fighting over? Why do I need to carry on this conversation? I said I was done with it and now you're blaming me for someone else's tweets. So, excellent job. You've encouraged more people to downplay and disregard the rhetoric of trans people, all while lying about the origins of the word genocide, lying or being just fucking wrong about the policies being advocated and passed by conservatives. Why do you think Sonsol's my company? He's fought with Polly before I even met her. This discourse has been had before I brought it up. That These two um, were sent at the same time. That's why it looked a bit disjointed. Okay, you're not listening. Friends like these, huh? Bye. Now, if anyone... Again, I'm not the most, <laughs> I'm not the most socially aware person. Um, if anyone thinks there was a better way I could have handled this, like, respond point by point, step back, acknowledge my faults, um, just leave the messages and let Doe fucking fire off into the void. I, like, like, there's nothing to engage with here. Bear in mind, the trans people bit, um, again, this is Sonsal speaking to Polly, the same individual trans person that I spoke to. So. Right. There are so many points in this exchange where I felt like any hope of a good faith engagement was fraught. 
I won't list them all here, but here are a few as an impression. Doe immediately opened the conversation by describing my position as DGG stupidity, despite my argument being fairly common outside of our space. So this is from the initial reaching out. Um, I think when people say this, especially from this community, uh, I think you're at that point, like the well is just poisoned enough to the point that there's not really much hope of going back. I find it really weird though that this words like Nazi or genocide don't have meanings anymore is a DGG idea because it's not hard to find that like, this is the BBC article on what is a genocide and they even say there's like a guy, um, I think he's like a human rights expert, um, MSF Secretary General. Um, Voice concern that the term genocide has fallen victim to a sort of verbal inflation, in much the same way as happened with the word fascist. DGG are confirmed. Common, uh, the Wikipedia article on transgenocide. Where is it? Did it move? Oh, yeah. Um, it was criticized by hate crime expert in the article here um, of the Canadian Jewish Congress as being insensitive to victims of recognized genocides known as the Holocaust. Um, this actually, this article suggests that the origins of the term transgenocide, it might have been a mistranslation. Um, it came not because of policies in the US, but because of um, the murder rates in Latin America. And it might have been just mistranslated because I think the, um, there's a, somewhere here when they talk about like, I think it's like transcide that they use or like, again, democide or the same way feminists will use femicide to talk about high murder rates of women. Um, but yeah, DGG or again, Canadian Jewish Congress. Um, there's actually a really good radio podcast where he talks about that topic in particular. I think he actually makes the argument that if you were talking about states that are guilty of transgenocide, a better example would be somewhere like Uganda or Middle Eastern countries where it's like a crime to be LGBTQ. Uh, and if you are caught being one of those things, they just kill you, just death penalty. Um, and he makes the case that those should be called for genocide. Um, it described my conflict with Polly as me promoting, discarding, and laughing at trans people who are worried about their oppression. Given that this is in reference to an engagement I had with a single trans person, incidentally, the same trans person Sonsol was arguing with, this invocation of trans people is clearly disingenuous in a way that you'd expect this corner of the internet to be very aware of. I will actually use that. I don't normally use this term because it's got like slightly toxic implications, but this whole thing about you're disagreeing with X, Y, Z trans person, like it's woke scolding. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, and the reason I'm using that term now is um, I'll reveal right at the end, okay? I wouldn't normally use the word woke scold because it's like, you know, right wing. But, um, I have never described conservative legislators as good natured or good hearted. If you can't see any middle ground between good natured and genocidal, that is most likely your problem, not mine. It accused me of lying about the origins of the word genocide despite me frequently bringing up examples that imply Lemkin's definition in both debates. Five, it accused me of lying about the policies being advocated and passed by conservatives. As far as I can find, um, I think there's only one example of me getting something wrong as I was referring back to an article from 2021, although I even qualified this by saying it's as far as I know unless there's something more recent. So I'll show you the guys. I think this is the thing they've accused me of lying for. I don't know. Can't think of anything. And else. often I think when I have these discussions with people is I ask a few people whether or not, um, like, oh, how many states do you think have banned uh, tra like, uh, trans healthcare for kids or have tried to? And they'll say, oh, I don't know, like 30. And there's like two and one of them failed. And often I think when I have these discussions, with people, so that's the first thing. Uh, the thing I'm referring to here, the two states banned uh, treatment for kids, one failed. It was in 2021. This is the article from The Guardian about it. Again, these are the, all the states that failed, and these are the two that passed. Um, so my knowledge at the time was that Tennessee passed um, a ban, but the ban was only on uh, hormone treatment for prepubescent minors, which is weird because no, no one recommends you give hormones to people before puberty. 
I think I'm pretty sure even blockers, I, I might be wrong, but I think even blockers, you have to start your initial stage of puberty before you go on blockers. I think that's the case. But um, this, this law didn't as currently didn't actually affect anyone's treatment. Um, you can still criticize it because it's like basically just like a hateful statement. And it's most likely them preparing to extend the ban next year. Arkansas pushed, uh, got through a full ban on gender affirming care for kids for under 18s, uh, and it was blocked by a federal judge. So that's what I'm referring to at the time. Like, I think since then, um, Alabama pushed, uh, got through a full ban for under 18s as well, but that was also blocked by a federal judge. Um, Arizona pushed a, uh, has actually, Arizona is the only one that can actually enforce their ban. The ban that Arizona pushed was, um, the fuck what was it? It was surgery for under 18s. That's the one that they've, they've enforced. Again, I disagree with all of those. I think all of the treatments should be available to under 18s. So. Um, the other ones, Florida did one as well, but their one was, their, I don't think their one has gone into law yet. It's, it, was, it was the one that was approved by the medical board. And that was uh, after the debate, though. That was, in, that was November that happened. So, all right. I even qualified this by saying, it's as far as I know, unless there's something more recent. I mean... I mean, there's, there's, there's many, many laws that are, 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 uh, I don't have the website up, but like, there's many, many laws that exist right now that have been passed in many states. Uh, mm -hmm. trying, no, I, specifically about trying to, banning, uh, about restricting healthcare for, for kids, right? Two states succeeded, I think, and one of them got overturned this year. As far as I know, unless uh, there's something more recent. Yeah. I'd have. To so if that's me lying, um, sorry. Contrast this with Demon Mama attempting to refute me by saying two states banned all gender affirming care, not just for minors. Specifically about banning, uh, about restricting health care for, for kids, right? Two states succeeded, I think, and one of them got overturned this year. No, no, no. Two states succeeded at passing a full ban, and both of them were overturned on the federal level, thank goodness. Two states succeeded at banning all not just for minors. I couldn't find anywhere where this was coming from. The only thing I could find was the only thing I could find was a state that had um, in Missouri. There's an article that said legislators were considering changing the age from 18 to 25, the minimum age. Um, but the heavy lifting there is coming from the word consider. Like legislators consider all kinds of shit. So I don't know if. I don't know of any state that's tried to ban trans healthcare for everyone, not just for minors. I have no idea what she's talking about there. Um, here, I mean, she elaborates on which states, because you can see as it goes on, someone in her chat asks um, which other one was an all besides Alabama. Because, because it can be debilitating when you sort Arkansas. of look. Yeah, Arkansas and Alabama banned for youths and got overturned. I don't know why she thought those two states banned all healthcare, not just for minors. Like, we'll go over it again, like she says. Overturned on the federal level, thank goodness. Two states succeeded at banning all, not just for minors. So, she doesn't go on to say, I'm not sure about that, I could be wrong. Just to maybe combat some of the, I guess, the disinformation then, sure. Um, as far as the bans go, I think, yeah, the actual like legal bans have come from Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Arizona. Tennessee's one doesn't actually affect anyone's treatment yet, but it, they're going to try to push it further in 23. Alabama, Arkansas blocked. Um, Arizona, they have been allowed to enforce this one, which is not very nice. Um, there are other ones that have done, like, not bans, but they've tried to limit. So in Florida, they did take it away from Medicaid. Um, that's not a ban, but that's still shit um texas directive did make doctors more reluctant when the uh before the federal block came in oklahoma governor tried in a very like sneaky indirect way because he withheld covid relief funds from a state hospital system unless it was uh unless it stopped providing care to minors so again i don't know if that's going to be this is quite recent so i don't know if that's going to be challenged at a federal level but yeah there you go again just like if you want my Moral take, every single one of these policies is dog shit. They're disgusting. Like, they should not be passed, but okay. Um, as far as I remember, I have never called any of the trans people I've interacted with on this issue crazy. But between Demon Mama smacking her fist, talking about how she wants more rip and tear, 
and Doe saying things like this, I hardly find it fair that I should be blamed when other people describe them as violent. Um, Doe did this tweet, which I thought was a bit... Inventing a new guy. Guy who thinks that using the word genocide to describe your oppressors, genocidal, uh, is a call to violence, but that using the phrase implementing policies designed to make life unlivable for a particular group in the hopes of elimination or erasure isn't one. Damn, found out this dude already exists, rip. Don't worry, they're only implementing policies designed to make your life unlivable. If it was a genocide, I would support you murdering those people, but since they are only making your life unlivable, it's really important that you write your local congressman. Again, like, being so dismissive of people who actually take their free time and do the work and establish like connections and with these like legislators to try and stop these laws from like canvassing or testifying and just and it's all shitting on all of it. It's so just weird. Um, I can explain this very easily. Um, again, direct violence versus systemic. I can explain why violence against uh, the genocidal actions of Germany in Eastern Europe made sense because Jewish militia groups actually did quite a good job at destroying Nazi infrastructure um, disrupting supply lines, uh, killing perpetrators, allowing people to escape. I can say why that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Same with the Rohingya Muslims, the rebel groups. It's the only way they can defend their communities. Um, as for implementing policies like systemic violence, well, I can't explain how killing the legislators will help. I can't explain how physical violence stops this problem. Okay, that's why I think they're different. If you want to challenge that, um, please just let me know. Okay. That I'm always, you know, I'm not like against political violence, believe it or not. Um, this was a DM. I don't actually know if I want to share this one. Fuck, I was going to leak, I was going to put out all the DMs from the very beginning of the conversation with Doe, but um, Doe has since uh, deleted its swear account or privated it. So I will say though, um, Doe, if you see this, if you think I've, uh, if you think I've misrepresented anything, you are more than welcome to leak everything. Go ahead. You can even leak the bit where I uh, made fun of Destiny in like 2021 or some shit in your DMs because I know that message was there as well. Go for it. Honorable mention. Gayfesh. Gayfesh is perhaps one of the saddest, most radioactively online losers in the entire online left. After President Sunday, self-appointed ambassador of the trans community decided I was going to throw my trans viewers under the bus at the drop of a hat, Dylan Burns asked him if that might be a bit of a reach. Gayfesh decided that this was yet another instance of Dylan being a total piece of shit, not an ally, and someone who was not going to stand up for queer folk. This is Sunday saying I'm going to drop all my trans viewers under the bus. Uh, Dylan, don't you think this is a bit of a reach? Um, Ah, so Dylan being a total piece of shit and not an ally is not just a several times fluke. Go back to your war tourism if you're not going to stand up for queer folk. When your litmus test for whether or not someone is adequately supporting LGBTQ rights rests solely on how loyal they are to your specific niche online community, it might be time to reflect on what exactly it is you want to achieve from this space. This is not the behavior of someone who wants allies. It's the behavior of someone who wants to exist in a cult. The people on your side are not going to agree with you on everything. This doesn't mean they care less than you do, nor does it mean they are against you. We are going to disagree sometimes, but for the most part, we are still on the same side. As someone who came out of Vosch's community and still feels quite welcome there, I have been relieved to find out that this level of purity testing has been limited to a small, albeit loud minority. I'm aware a lot of Vosh viewers in my community have disagreed with me on this issue, but for whatever reason, have decided to defend me anyway. Shout out to the VGG boys and girls and NBs for supporting me. Thank you very much. Um, this was a thread about, do you have opinions you're not comfortable with expressing in this community? And this person wrote a whole big thing about the, the genocide thing. I thought that was quite a good thread, but we'll just leave it. <laughs> this one. Um, why is Gayfesh a member of this community with takes? Like the, the take here was the um the tweet to Dylan. And uh yeah, they're <laughs> they're not being <laughs> okay. Uh though I'm not too worried about this particular community's ability immediate sorry. <clears throat> though I'm not too worried about this particular community's immediate ability to harm me, they don't really have the reach for that. I do think the accusations they've made against me are a bit less trivial than they seem. 
The accusation that I tried to TOS bait a trans woman can quickly morph into the claim that I tried to get a small trans streamer banned from Twitch. The fact that I didn't go easy on a fellow debate streamer and an argument she agreed to have has already transposed into the claim that I cruelly mocked a scared trans woman who just wanted to talk about her oppression. That claim has already evolved into an image of me dismissing trans people as a whole. Of course, despite the masterclass in projection, I am not the one with an extensive history of attacking people's platforms and livelihoods, nor do I have a tendency to celebrate deplatforming when it does happen. If someone like Gayfesh can convince himself that I tried to take away an innocent person's platform, wouldn't he be justified in doing exactly the same to me? After all, it's no secret that they've gone after people for less. We ready, guys? Deep breaths. Epilogue. Riley Grace Rochon. This story is wild. Riley Grace Rochong, otherwise known as RGR, is a former Twitch streamer and YouTuber who is known in this space partially for her very unsavory interactions with Doe and Demon Mama. Having stepped away from YouTube for almost a year now, Riley is currently in the final stages of her law degree and also working, unpaid, as a board member for Free State Justice, FSJ, a non-profit organization that provides legal services, legal advocacy, education and outreach for LGBTQ people and their families in the state of Maryland. In September this year, Doe, Demon Mama, and Gayfesh shared a statement from the former executive director of FSJ accusing the board, Riley included, of corruption and the upholding of white supremacist culture. We'll go into all these tweets throughout. This is Doe who broke the story on Twitter, I think. Demon Mama? Both Doe and I have now been repeatedly vindicated of the obscene lies, and then this shares the post. Whoa. Let's go back, chat. Gayfesh. The director of the advocacy group RGR is on the board of just resigned and accused her of power grabbing and furthering white supremacist culture. Here's his letter. Okay. The person in question, Jeremy Lamaster, published a statement where he claimed to have called for the immediate resignations of every member of the board and accused them of failing in their fiduciary responsibilities, engaging in partisan lobbying and trying to consolidate power. Upon reading Lamaster's statement the day after it was published, I was a little skeptical of his claims, especially in contrast to Demon Mama and Gayfesh, who seemed entirely uncritical. They neglected to say, for example, that two, border, that two former board members had challenged Lamaster's claims and that his apparent resignation had come four days after being told he would be fired. So this is the article where they challenge the claims. Uh, it's mostly his statement here, and then it goes into the bottom to say that the board members challenged it. So this is Charlotte and 100% uh, false. Okay. I will give you that article just in case. A quick Google search. Oh, shit. I also noticed that the evidence Lamaster gave of white supremacist culture was incredibly vague. And this is. This is from his statement. Uh, These are the hallmarks of white supremacist culture the concentration of power, power hoarding, defensiveness, right to comfort, fear of open conflict, hyper individualism, and a false sense of urgency. I mean. Okay. A quick Google search of the terms he invoked led me to this website where he seems to have lifted them from. And this website just has all of them listed, like right to comfort, power hoarding, fear of conflict. Um, This website's really weird, though. It's like a it's like something you'd expect from like Robin D'Angelo or something. It's just so odd. Um, As I understand it, this dispute hasn't been settled, and as an outsider, I can only be 100% confident in describing this as one story against another. That said, the events that transpired since Lamaster's initial statement have given me more than enough reason to doubt his claims. Here they are in chronological order. On September 20th, LGBTQ Nation published an article which mostly featured quotes from Lamaster's resignation letter. This is the article I've linked in chat. 
However, the article also gave counterclaims from two former directors, one claiming that LeMaster had single-handedly destroyed the organization on their own, and the other stating that numerous employees hired over the past two years have expressed concerns regarding his management. Um, one of these former board members did say that there was problems with the board as well, but they also said LeMaster's claims were, like, shit. This article came out on the same day as Doe's initial tweet, but the dissenting opinions from former board members were not acknowledged. So again, Doe's tweet is just the resignation letter from the master. Wait, where's the statement? Sorry, I forgot to read the statement. Let's just read a statement, okay. Um, this is the one that he published and Doe shared, and Demon Mama and Gay Fesh did as well. Whistleblowing. Public call for the resignation of the Free State Board of Directors. This morning, I requested the Free State Justice Board of Directors to submit their immediate resignations due to persistent violations of our board handbook, consistent failures in their fiduciary responsibilities, and using positions of power to engage in partisan lobbying within Free State Justice, and their repeated refusal to add new members and leadership to the board. They declined. It is with a heavy heart that I announce my resignation and make a public call for their resignation instead. He just lists all the board members here. And he puts their email. Please know that I exhausted every avenue over the last two years to get our board fully staffed and running, and I made good faith efforts to work with the board to ensure that our clients and low-income LGBTQ Marylanders remained at our center. Instead, the board has refused to accept any new board members since 2021 and refused to staff and run core board activities as per our handbook. Instead, they have worked to consolidate power and amend the board handbook in secret to lower the minimum number of board members required and ensure that our policy positions prioritize relationships with legislators, not the best interests of our clients and community. I have provided clear warnings and consistent concerns over these issues that were repeatedly ignored. These are the hallmarks of white supremacist culture, the concentration of power, power hoarding, defensiveness, right to comfort, fear of open conflict, hyper-individualism, false sense of urgency. I encourage our community and our supporters to meaningfully consider how racism can be incorporated into leadership. And this document provides a great template for what this looks like. So this is the statement from LeMaster, okay? This is what we went on. This is the article, okay. So we're back to where we were. This is where things get a little bit, um, a little bit spicy. On September 21st, the board members of FSJ filed a legal complaint against LeMaster and issued a temporary restraining order against them. In the complaint, they accuse him of locking other employees out of their accounts, thereby giving himself exclusive access to organizations' IT infrastructure, as well as employee lists, donor lists, volunteer lists, etc. Uploading a defamatory post, the one shared by Doe, Dean Mama, etc., to the FSJ website and to 43,000 recipients on the organization's mailing list, causing financial injury to the organization and impairing their ability to work for their clients, breach of duty by breaking signed company agreements, breaking laws around computer abuse, and misuse of trade secrets. This is going to court. They are taking him, as far as I know, right now, this is still ongoing, and they're taking him to court over this. Um, this is their legal complaint. It's, uh, it's pretty long. They accuse him of more crimes than you can count on one hand. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. There's uh, their list of exhibits here, all that. Yeah. I will share that as well. On the 21st and 22nd, I called this out in two Twitter threads. One, which is a, ret what, hmm, one, which is a retweet of Gayfesh, but no one commented. This is what I said at the time as well. So I did speak about this when it happened. Um, joked about the evidence of white supremacist culture. You can read the whole story here. As far as we know, this is one word against another. There's already a statement rebuking the original. I'm not saying anyone needs to like RGR, but you're not exactly hiding the fact that you really want to believe this ahead of time just because it's a quick dunk. This is um, Gayfesh saying, it's entirely possible he's just butt mad about his incompetence, but... I've seen what a toxic board can do to an organization, have you, and make it look like it was the director's fault before. I promise you can easily dislike someone without acting as if every fiber of their being is fundamentally rotten. People are already using this as proof against the idea that she, stu that she does good YRL work. It's an accusation that's currently being challenged. Chill. Um, second one. 
after I learned about the trial, the court case. Turns out the guy who made these claims has been issued a temporary restraining order. Apparently he'd hijacked the group's accounts and changed passwords after being let go earlier this month. They've accused Lamaster of locking the staff out of their accounts and making unauthorized defamatory posts to the organization's website when no one else could access it. Uh, this will have given him access to donor information and information that was subject to client attorney confidentiality. He's been accused of causing damages and losses to the organization in several ways. Um, if this is true, it means quite a few people were willing to spread damaging and incredibly weak allegations against an LGBTQ advocacy, advocacy group just because they wanted to get a dunk online. I should say, I don't think this means Doe or Demon Mama are bad people. I've only had good relations with both of them and don't plan on changing that. But this just really looks, looks really reckless and irresponsible, especially now that legal action is involved. That's what I said at the time. I don't know if they saw it and just didn't say anything, but they didn't say anything. Um, right. Despite this information now being publicly available, Demon Mama and Gayfesh continued to accept Lamaster's side of the story at face value. Two weeks after tweeting that this was two days, sorry, shit. Two days after tweeting that this was an example of her and Doe being vindicated against Riley, Demon Mama dismissed the counterclaim from FSJ, arguing that Lamaster's statement was perfectly salient and well argued. When asked her thoughts about Lamaster trashing Free State's internal systems, she says, with no hint of irony, post proof or get the fuck out. So, both Doe and I have now been repeatedly vindicated of the obscene lies Riley Grace Rochong spread about us. Doe even more than I. She stood by her lies, despite the severe harassment they caused, never apologized, now this. Uh, this was two days, I screenshotted this, just in case. Uh, Demon Mama's deleted all her tweets as well, so they're both pretty done with Twitter, it seems. Anyway. Um, Someone replied two days later, vindicated, you say? This was the statement from Free State Justice. I'll just read this. Um, on the 16th of September, uh, Lamaster was relieved of their duties. Lamaster's pronouns are he, they, as far as I know. Um, that's what it says in the court document, anyway. Um, yeah, September 16th. So this is four days after Lamaster published his statement that they relieved him of his duties. We attempted to work with Lamaster directly. Instead, he opted to compromise our systems and operations. The management team and board have been focused on restoring full functionality, but we'll need a little bit more time to complete these efforts. Um, yeah, just all this. Thank you for our patience. Demon Mama. This is a pretty typical statement you would expect from a board of directors which has been consolidating power and wants to make any dissenters look bad. Lamaster's statement was perfectly salient and well argued. So, yes, vindicated. You have nothing to say about Lamaster trashing their internal systems, which allows them to do their work. Post proof or get the fuck out. What's your proof of uh, anything Lamaster said? The only, at this time, the only correct opinion for someone like us to have about this is that there are two mutually, there are two opposing claims and it's going to court. That's, that's it. Like, now, I personally, um, having learned from January 6th, tend to favor people who are willing to take their claims to court, but you never know. Maybe this Lamaster guy will convince a jury of his peers or prove to a judge or prove in a court of law that Riley Grace is actually a white supremacist, but I don't know. Gayfesh wrote an unfathomably deranged thread arguing that Riley was actually the primary target for much of Lamaster's criticism, citing her association with Destiny as one example. After reading the, after reading the resignation statement from the Free State Justice Director and becoming increasingly convinced, even though he names the entire board, it is very likely that RGR was the primary target of much of his criticism. Thread. Ignoring the actual people they're supposed to be protecting in order to cozy up to legislators is exactly the sort of thing Riley has done in the past. She burned her community to the ground in 2021 for a crumb of destiny clout and hurt the people <laughs> she was claiming to defend. Um, how many times has destiny appeared in this story? The... The only connection 
Destiny has to this entire story, as far as I know, is that some people think my question to Rose Wrist actually came from him. And that he disagrees that there's a trans genocide in the US right now. That's, I think that's it. I think that's his only connection to this. And he just keeps coming up. It's so funny. All right. This definitely sounds something like, out, like something out of our playbook. Uh, refuse to ever acknowledge guilt and claim that you are doing things for the good of the community to use as a bludgeon for your abusive tendencies. Hmm. Um, Riley actually fell out with me over a year ago and did actually make up with me for that. So, you know. Uh, okay. A year ago, I got pulled into the drama in a big way when a now former member of the board of FSJ went on a full-throated defense of Riley because of this tweet. Note the highlighted section, uh, RGR is literally our enemy. I don't want her doing any advocacy online or in real life. If she gains political relevance, she will literally throw us all under the bus to win normie points with the cishets. If you were my lawyer, by the end of the trial, you'd be found guilty. Whoa. Um, looks like I was right. Motherfucker, why do you think you were... Jeez, it's... Okay. I wish I could have this level of confidence. It's so envi enviable. All right. I've seen what happens to organizations like this when the board works to consolidate their power and burn through directors. FSJ is very likely not long for this world. Like, mate, how much experience do Gayfesh and Demon Mama have with, <laughs> with boards of directors of nonprofits? Why this, ah, I have seen this song and dance unfold in many a uh, non-profit organization for LGBTQ people. Like, what the? F they both said this, like, like you, you, this guy hasn't left his house since like 2008. I don't know why he's pretending to know what is typical of a non-profit uh, organization for LGBTQ people. It's not like they're. It's a non-profit. They're not like millionaire board directors and shit. Yeah. Who knows how many people could have been helped if Riley hadn't been there. All right. On September 24th, this time with access to FSJ's legal complaint, the same writer from the LGBTQ Nation published a second article in the story. This one was far less kind towards Lamaster than the first one. This is um, the second article. Same author as the first one, coming down a lot harder on the master after they've had the, uh, the legal document. This month, I was able to get a statement from an anonymous FSJ board member who described the master's actions as a scorched earth campaign. We did it, actually, yeah. I got a statement from a board member, anonymous. Let's hear it. The idea that Free State has a white supremacist culture is nothing more than a flat-out lie and slander. It feels like something that was... De uh, it feels like a statement that was specifically designed to act as a scorched earth campaign as Jeremy left the organization. Maybe he was bitter. Maybe it was any number of reasons. Either way, it's a flat-out lie. I feel like the same people who jumped on this immediately once it hit the public, uh, once it became public and he made a statement, have a f similar feeling of bitterness about themselves, this time just directed at Riley. You can be critical of Riley. That's fine. People deserve to be criticized if you think they've done something wrong. But there's zero reason for you to try to drag down an LGBTQ plus organization that has helped thousands of trans, gay, bisexual, and other queer people in the state of Maryland. Chat, please do not uh, speculate on the identity of my anonymous source. Why are you laughing? I was laughing because he uh, stumbled over his words the first time he tried to say that. Um, my anonymous source, by the way, please don't speculate. All right. What Demon Mama, Doe, and Gayfesh did here was spread completely unverified and possibly defamatory claims against the largest LGBTQ organization in Maryland, just because they saw an opportunity to dunk on someone they had a spat with online. I don't doubt this level of recklessness is justified in their minds because of some social crime Riley committed, which would make her fair game for attack. In Riley's case, it was most likely the pedo jacketing incident. Whether this stands higher or lower than Fed posting on the hierarchy of internet crimes, I can't say, with Doe. 
Having looked around for the origins of this charge, the only evidence I was able to find of Riley calling Doe a pedophile was this. Sorry for the leftist audio, by the way. Okay. All right, three, two, really one. Weird. A lot of people. Really weird. 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 Um, TGG, incidentally, then, um, I don't know if saying someone is negligently or intentionally justifying pedophilia means the same as calling them a pedophile. Personally, when I, when I call, when I say someone's making conservative arguments, I don't think that's me calling them a conservative. Um, apparently there are tweets. I just can't like, okay, well, but I haven't seen them. So I don't know. In any case. Like, I watched the debate, though. Like, Doe was happy to say that this quote was Riley calling Doe a pedophile, so, like. I suppose if this is your threshold for deciding it's okay to attack someone's real-life work and advocacy, I do hope this is a standard that can at least be applied consistently. After all, if one pedo-jacketer is fair game, surely all of them are. Lithium mines. You are literally right, well, advocating sure right now for child charge, raping. Then. Guys, Vegan Gains uh -huh. just came on my show to uh -huh. advocate about child rapists in favor okay, of child that's, rape. That's a cool story. So you believe that it's morally acceptable to pay for humans to be murdered? You think it's, you believe it's morally acceptable to pay for I'm child freak? rape? Yeah, you're a freak. So you come you on here advocating for child rape by your own worldview. Dude, you're no. a child rapist. Uh, you like no, what do you got? So. What do you? What else are you paying for? How many subscriptions to child porn sites do you have? Um, you no, know, that's maybe a bit more of a Peter jacket than Riley's quote or any quote from Riley that I've seen. Um, I personally don't think invoking pedophilia and people at all is really a good idea. So that's my position. It's not. That's not the question, though, right? The question is whether or not it justifies you going after their life's advocacy and their life's work. What like? A year later? Huh? Maybe not. Um, by the way, with that clip, Demon Mama will say that it's actually okay for her to say it to get vegan gains because he accused her of uh, being okay with eating human meat if it was stocked on the shelves. So it's like a back and forth. But the reason he said she was okay with eating human meat if it was on the shelves is actually because of this. But I mean, but so if you like, learned, right. So if, if, sorry, if you learned all the meat you were eating right now, um, it wasn't chicken, it wasn't beef, wasn't whatever. It was actually human beings and you're being lied to. Sure. And the only meat in existence is human beings. Would you go vegan tomorrow? No, probably not. I think the uh, correct answer to that question, if you don't want to be accused of being okay with eating human meat. I think you're supposed to say yes to that question. That you would go vegan if all the meat in the shops was actually humans who had been murdered for their meat. But it's a 50-50 chance, really. Um, could have happened to anyone. To restate what I said at the beginning, I don't expect this to change the minds of anyone involved. This is not for them. This is for myself, my audience, who will now have something to refer to in the future, and for any neutral observers who may not have had the full story of what was going on. Going forward, I expect the people involved and their communities will have no problem rolling around in the mud without me. President Sunday and Polly people have already fallen out, and it doesn't look like the toxicity of Polly and her community was lost on him or his audience. Um, yeah, President Sunday and Polly had a... <laughs> I don't know what over. I haven't figured that out yet, but they had a bit of a scrap. Would you would you let me finish talking? You're talking you every time I talk, talk to you. Are you gonna let me talk? You're gonna talk over me. We're both talking over each other. This not Are you gonna let me talk or are you gonna, can I talk? Of course. But we don't have a moderator, like we don't have like assigned blocks. We don't can just like I say talk? it is my time. To and speak. I right. talk, oh, really works. or are you going to be fucking a hardcore misogyny on me? What? Are you going to keep doing your misogyny shit on me? Are you uh, going to let me fucking What am I talk? doing that's misogynistic? You won't let me talk. You're bullying me, but 
you we're, let's, you we, turn this is an unmoderated the, conversation. We both speak at the same time. This happens okay. everywhere. All right, so you can just talk however you want then. Okay, fine. Yeah, fine. so can you. I, all right, okay, you, okay, well then, I don't know why we're talking because you can't control yourself. You can't let me finish talking. And now you just gave yourself permission to talk over me. You're a literal piece of shit, dude. Uh, um, it's all subjective, you guys. All I see here is a scared, vulnerable trans woman being bullied by a bad ally, okay? It's this. I've blocked poly people on all platforms. I will not be engaging with her any further. Her mod team is toxic. She does not take responsibility for it. And she's now spent about 15 hours of stream time doing nothing but lying about and heckling me. <laughs> Not just the projection, but also um, the, uh, if only there was uh, someone who this happened to before, who you could have taken an example from. Because uh, she did the same to me. She streamed about me for like a week after talking to me. Um, all of these streams are about me. She has been talking about me for over 20 hours of airtime straight. This is not normal. Liked by demon. It's this. This is her and her Discord, by the way. If we wanted to put one more lid on the uh, thing. On the scared trans woman just looking for empathy, whatever. Uh, for sure, I don't have too much drama right now, but hopefully someone will be dumb enough to attack me. I've got to send out the fishing line. You know what? I respect this. I respect someone who is very open about her whole thing online. I actually, yes, go off, queen. All right. At least you know who you're dealing with. Um, I wasn't originally going to use these, but she, um, she did say some weird shit when she was streaming about me. This is like day two or three after streaming about me. Um, no, Lonerbox said he doesn't appreciate people calling him cis because he's figuring out his gender. <sighs> what a defense. First of all, the clip they're referring to, I was joking. I said like right after the whole, oh, are you calling me cis? That I don't actually care if people call me cis. Like, it's fine. But, um, yeah. It is, yeah. Oh. Why is why would you say that? Is that just okay? Fine, you're a person figuring out your gender. Who is wrong on this? He just doesn't want people calling him cis, and he may be trying to figure out his gender. I'm not gonna, you know, say that that's wrong or anything, but it does seem strangely timed, and it doesn't even matter anyway. Strangely timed, damn. Not very keen on the self ID thing going on there. By the way, I've spoken about myself being like, I don't know, 63% sure that I'm non-binary since like 2020 or so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she said something really weird about this afterwards. Okay, wait. Hold on a second. Let us, let us take a very alterable, charitable point of view here. This is maximum fucking charitability. Uh, and of course, it makes me sound like a dumbass that I would even say this. But let me just say it as a possibility let's say let's say that so loner box has some neo lib takes but you know he's overall you know there's way worse people out there true uh maybe he is trying to figure out his gender and maybe uh if uh one of the things that he's facing is the chilling effect of some of these policies uh that if he really sort of figures it out and feels like you know maybe he's trans or whatever uh, would would be very uh, that much more scary to him. Maybe that would be the thing that would put him in denial as to whether there's a genocide going on. Is that way too? Am, am I being a fucking pussy? Is that me? I feel like that's me gaslighting myself. But if that's the case, that's too. It's too charitable. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, because if that's the case, then he should be willing to say that. You should be willing to say, well, maybe I'm too, like, 
Maybe I'm too wrapped up in this or whatever. That's charitable even for me. Okay, okay, okay. Focus on the facts and what he says in his actions. Right, right, right. right. Sounds like a bullshit smoke screen, yeah. It doesn't excuse it, and and it's, you know, it's too charitable to just assume that. Mm. But it would be something to say, look, if that's what's going on, just say it then. Just say you're, 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 you're likely wrong on this and we should not listen to you, right? Because if that's the case, then he's going to have to at least, like, you know, say... Uh, say i'm just you know i'm i'm on copium right now so Mm. we can all move on i i probably could have sat down and watched all those streams i would have dug out a lot of very interesting claims there but i don't need to comment on that really i couldn't help but feel bad for president sunday as he as she accused him of doing hardcore misogyny white fragility and being a bad ally whilst her community accused his chat of being riddled with transphobia, a claim which Sunday's trans viewers obviously haven't taken kindly to. I imagine Polly's comment after this talk must have stung, given that the main complaint about my debate with her was with the way I conducted myself. This is a comment she left under the VOD of President Sunday's debate with her. I would like to provide a minor critique if that's okay. It was literally impossible to say anything because Sunday would constantly interrupt me and talk over me. Even Lonerbox didn't do that. If I responded emotionally, it was because Sunday was lying about me and not allowing me to respond uninterrupted. Take that into account. Sunday looks terrible from an outsider's perspective. This is drama from Sunday, not an attempt to understand. Even Lonerbox didn't do that. Listen, Sunday, if you ever want to have a, a long, good faith conversation about your conduct, with a vulnerable trans woman. I might not teach you how to be a good ally, but at least a slightly better one who knows how to shut the fuck up when other people are speaking. Uh, after this talk must have stung, what the fuck is this? I, uh, I was thinking of DMing this to him just because it was like after the poly debate, but I don't know. Yeah. When communities like these are so inherently self-consuming, Maybe the better option is just to stand back and watch. As a very wise, anonymous Twitter user once said, it is an unequivocal good that the woke scold cliques on the left are drying out like fish in the hot sun. Shallow, bankrupt analyses woven into giant time-wasting webs of useless back and forth. Woke scolds will invent the most inane social crime you've somehow committed, then erase every category you belong to. Their communities are miserable. All they do is procedurally tear each other apart and isolate, incapable of working through anything because they've all invented a local dogma you're supposed to just intuit from being around their grand moral aura. That anonymous Twitter user, of course, is uh, from Demon Monk. Um, the end. I fucked your mom.